Everett Todd getting the special teams ready. New Mexico getting set to kick off to the Red Raiders. And there's a look at head coach Rocky Long in his second season, or seventh season rather, at the University of New Mexico. My correction, the Lobos will be receiving the opening kickoff here. Texas Tech won the toss, deferred to the second half. Fans still coming in at uh, University Stadium, which is kind of a tradition here. Late arriving crowd, many of them enjoying the tailgating out in the parking lot. I'm surprised some of them were waiting this late to come in after last week. With that. A lot of them got in, but deep to the second quarter because <laughs> they came in late. Getting ready to tee it up and kick it off for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, getting his first action of the uh, season, his first start, to be more precise, is redshirt freshman, 5'11", 175 pounds, number 30, Alex Kralika, who will kick it off again. He wears number 30. The officials say we are ready to go, and so are we, and the Lobos receiving it, but this one is deep into the end zone. And New Mexico will bring it out to the 20 on a very hot day here at University Stadium. Anthony Carter caught the ball in the end zone but did not bring it out wisely about 10 yards deep. And so we'll get a look at Cole McCamey, sophomore redshirt from Artesian, New Mexico, who had uh, the coaches say they were uh, certainly pleased with his performance in game one, although far from satisfied, especially with those three interceptions. The interceptions, of course, Mike, are something a rookie quarterback would normally do. I mean, it was his first start. And uh, you can imagine what kind of pressure he was under. And, and considering all that, he, he held his own pretty well. McCamey wears number 12. Lobos go with four wide receivers to start the game from the shotgun. Dontrell Moore in motion. Empty backfield. Batted away. The right end got his arm up. Big number 92, Seth Dishman from Corpus Christi, put the right arm up and batted the ball away. And Mike, that's what they teach you on that defensive line. Whenever you see the quarterback drop back and his, his, if his arm is cocked back, your hand goes up. That's what happens. So it'll be second down and 10 for New Mexico at the 20. New Mexico now with the eye formation. Tight end to the right. Two wide receivers. Texas Tech in its 4-3 base defense. Short drop, left side. Hank Basket with the catch. And he'll pick up enough, well, just shy of the first down before he's brought down by Khalid Nazareddin, who uh, is the right cornerback for the Red Raiders. And I think that's great to get Hank Basket involved immediately because you know that he's a big factor as far as uh, he's, he's a big part of this offense as far as receivers go. And Lobos had some concern about maybe him getting double covered early and stuff like that. So they go to him right away. That's great. Nine catches, 160 plus yards last week. How about that for a coming out party? Third down and two for New Mexico at the 28. Short drop, going to the left again, and this one was off the mark. So three straight attempts to pass the ball, three straight to the left side. Dontrell Moore did not get a hand on the ball on that drive, and so New Mexico will punt it away three and out to start the game. Well, Tech is obviously showing New Mexico something that they don't like as far as the option is concerned. I thought they'd come out right away and start with that option. It was so successful against Washington State, but they're dropping back and throwing those quick passes because those safeties are coming up the field pretty quick on that line. Good look there at Tyler Goss, the New Mexico punter, the junior, averaged 41 yards per punt last week. The deep receiver, Nehemiah Glover, for the Red Raiders. <coughs> Glover has some jets, Mike. This guy can really run. The punt, not bad, at about the 20. Right through the hands, ball is loose. And that is key because Texas Tech had a game last week where they had no turnovers. Lobos, of course, experienced their, their own turnovers last week as we watched the replay coming up. I think Glover probably thought about running before he really caught that ball all the way. Went right through his legs and Lobos was able to pounce on that ball right away. Great field position. 
give Marcus, Marcus Smith a lot of credit. He was down there early. He was New Mexico's scout team MVP last year. That play had me all choked up here, Van. Let's see if we can get it together. New Mexico in business at the 16. Now to Dontrell Moore's got a hole just tripped up. And did you see Dontrell Moore did have a hole. Ryan Cook blew his man off the ball big time. And Dontrell, all he had to do was just keep going, of course, losing his footing there. Dontrell probably couldn't believe how big the hole was also. You, you, you get kind of ahead of yourself there and, and slip a little bit. Second down and a long six at the 12. Anthony Carter brought the play in. He wears number 87. Two tight end set. Option. McCamey with some room. Can he get a block? And touchdown! Right there, Mike, you just saw the speed of Cole McCamey. When he got around the corner, he did get a block, a little bit of a block, but a lot of that give Cole McCamey credit for coming off the end and coming with some explosiveness as far as getting all the way to the end zone. Cole McCamey says, don't call me a running quarterback, but he looked pretty good right there <laughs> to get his first rushing touchdown as a Lobo. Wes Sunker on to attempt the extra point. McCamey the holder. One right down the middle, and so New Mexico makes the Red Raiders pay after the turnover, and the Lobos jump in front, 7-0. Here's the replay on the touchdown. Once again, you'll see Cole come out, running the option play, and then watch him look around the corner, knowing that he doesn't have to pitch to Dontrell because he has a little daylight, and watch the speed as he just gets around. Got a good block there on the side to spring him. Couple a lot of good of that blocks, is... couple of good blocks, Van. One by Adrian Bird, the fullback. Watch number 44. And a nice little nifty move by Cole right there, faking inside, going back out. And just keeping an angle to the end zone. And so New Mexico led by Cole McCamey on the board first. 7-0 our score. 12 yards on the touchdown run. That's a season best for Cole McCamey. You see he's Oop. having an Arteza flashback there. <laughs> McCamey beat out Taliana for the starting job. And that was a, a pretty good race as far as for the starting quarterback job, but I think in, in the end it was, it was probably pretty much decided even in the spring because of uh, what you just saw there, McCamey's athleticism and, and his speed, as far as his speed, he's able to, uh, he's really effective running something like the option because you can't really bite down on him too hard or you got Dontrell to worry about, then, you know, just like what just happened. Right. <laughs> There's a, a look at Tiffany Scaglione, former Lobo <laughs> basketball player and and former uh, Terry Huey Huey intern. Yeah. Which do you think she put first on her resume? Of course, Terry Huey intern. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> did you ask me that, Mike? I did, Mike Kelly. <laughs> Texas Tech has a very good return team from kickoffs, and we'll see what they do here tonight. Yeah, we were talking about earlier uh, when, they, when they were punting the Nehemiah Glover guy. I mean, that, that guy, as far as having speed, that guy has a lot of speed. Well, Glover is he's not in on, there right yeah, now. Vincent Meeks, number one, is back, and there's the guy you want to watch, Johnny Mack, number four. Third best in the country last year, averaging 28 and a half yards per return. And he's got the Judd Dredd thing going, right? Long hair under the house. Yes, indeed. See what New Mexico's coverage could do. High kick. This is returnable. Johnny Mack inside the five. Up the middle. Good move there. Trying to find some room on the sideline. Flags come flying in. He's out of bounds at the 30. But this one will be coming back. I think there's a push in the back. Mike. On a return. Once again, Marcus Smith on the coverage for New Mexico, but this one will come back in all likelihood inside the 15-yard line. There's the signal from our officiating crew here tonight. 
Coach Rocky Long looking and enjoying what he's seeing. Still has that stoic look. Rocky's always got that stoic look on the sideline. Number 42 of the return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, Mike, you can see the hole coming up here. On, look on the left side of the screen, number 42, White holding right there, holding the Lobos, uh, number 16, that is, so the Lobos being held as Mack was coming around the corner there. Fletcher Session, the linebacker for Texas Tech, guilty of the hold, and you'll notice they are now announcing the number of the guilty party this season. Lobos setting up in a 2-6, Mike, on defense. Very odd formation. Check that out. They're going with six defensive backs. And there's the quick pass to the far sideline. And going over the top of the sign, uh, never really brought down, except by that sign, was Hicks for Texas Tech. And that's Jared Hicks. And he picks up five. And I would guess that that 2-6 would keep Tech in check as far as you're going to see a lot of those pick routes all day. And, and some of those can go for big plays. A lot of explosion afterwards, depending on if, the, if somebody is screened off of that play. So that's, I'm, I'm guessing that's why they're doing this 2-6. Two, two down linemen, Kyle Coulter and Marcus Parker. Three linebackers and six defensive backs. Lobos will blitz with that package. They do there. Pumping in the pocket to the running back coming out of the backfield. And that will be good enough for the first down. That's Nehemiah Glover, and these are these are scat backs for Texas Tech. These are not big, bulky, fullback type ball carriers, so they are terrific catching the ball, and that's an example of that. Glover had five receptions last week. And watch how Combi just sits there and watch it happen, and this is the danger of these plays, these short, little short passes, Mike, because sometimes those short passes go for 80 yards. That's the danger in those plays. You gotta get a lot of pressure up on the line very quickly against an offense like that. Come be under center. Running play by the Red Raiders. Out of the backfield going forward is Torian Henderson from Gatesville, Texas. Torian Henderson also likes to catch the ball too. If you can't catch the ball, you can't play at Texas Tech. <laughs> Henderson, leading rusher for the Red Raiders last week with uh, 54 yards, brought down by Brandon Payne, number 28 for New Mexico. Had a great game last week on that left corner spot with two interceptions. Second and seven at the 26 from the shotgun down. Tight end on the field for the Red Raiders. And off again, up the middle. Jitterbugging forward near the yardstick. Is the ball loose? It's loose. It's loose. Was it blown dead? Running it into the end zone is Art Haynes. Will it be a touchdown? The referee says yes. But we're going to have to wait and see. It looks like they'll discuss it back near the 34-yard line. And the boos that you may be able to hear may be uh, an indication of what they're finally going to decide. The runner was rolled down prior to the ball coming out. Third down. Fumble, but after he was ruled down. And so that will bring up third down and one. And let's take a look at it right here. That ball was coming out. Ball was knee. coming out. Hit the ground. Texas Tech caught. It looks like they may have caught a break on that. Ball's already coming Look out. Look at that. Well out by there. And we'll talk more about it when we come back. Lobos lead 7 nothing, but Red Raiders got a break there. This UNM Lobo football telecast brought to you in part by your Albuquerque Toyota dealers. And the fans continue to boo after that questionable call by the officials. Ruled the knee was down before the fumble. But once again, no definitive decision from the officials as it happened. And that's what makes fans upset when they don't make the call right away. Third down play for Texas Tech. About one yard to go. They'll throw for it, and they get it. 
And we're going to take a look one more time at the fumble. You can see clearly, Mike, before Henderson is even, before his knees are anywhere near the ground, that ball starts to come out. And that is when it's a fumble, when the ball is already starting, the, the runner doesn't have possession of the ball as it's going down. Second first down for Texas Tech. Cumbie from the shotgun now. Lobo defense spread out all over the field to try to cover the Red Raider, Raider receivers. Ball bobbled, but caught. And now they're saying it's an incomplete pass. Coming out of the backfield was uh, Glover. And also over there, Henderson for the Red Raiders. But an incomplete pass. Kind of uncharacteristic of Texas Tech as far as uh, jittery with the ball and stuff. I know these, these guys are young, and, and uh, usually they have the, they're, they're missing Welker and Francis and those guys from last year. But you can see the inexperience showing a little bit, and, and maybe some of the physicalness of the Lobos getting to some of these Red Raiders receivers a little bit. That was Cumbie's first misfire. He's 3 of 4, 18 yards. Changing the play now. It's the playoff. Good hit. Nice stick by the Lobo defensive back coming up. Pass complete to Cody Fuller. And putting the hit on was Ken West. He's a transfer out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. And watch this hit, Mike. This is just basic textbook hitting. Wrap up your man, and he has nowhere to go. No forward momentum, nothing. He's going down. Third down play for the Red Raiders. Terrific crowd on hand here tonight. Hoping to see New Mexico end a 10-game losing streak to Tech. Play clock down to one, and, and the Red Raiders have to use a timeout. And I think that Lobo defense that, with so many defensive backs in there has got to be confusing Texas Tech. We're going to take a timeout as the Red Raiders talk things over. New Mexico in front, 7-0. by the New Mexico Lottery. So far, the New Mexico Lottery has raised nearly $220 million for lottery success scholarships for students throughout New Mexico. The New Mexico Lottery benefiting New Mexico's future today. Well, a big third down play coming up for the Lobo defense. Of course, we're just underway on this beautiful day in Albuquerque. 10.45 to go in the first quarter with New Mexico up 7-0. Red Raiders. One for one on third down tries. Trip set to the top of your screen. Lone receiver to the bottom. Cumby with time. Now out of the pocket. Gets rid of it. Caught for the first down. Just shy of the 50 and making the catch is Cody Fuller. Cumby came very close to uh, suffering a sack on that play as the pocket was starting to break down around him. Global speed coming around, and, but he just hung in there and stuck, stayed in the pocket, and this happens downfield when you do that. Somebody's going to get open. Look at the pocket start to collapse around him, and Cumbie just rolls out to the right, finds his receiver downfield, Fuller makes the grab, and there you go. Well, there was a penalty on Brandon Payne, I believe, holding. No, I was wondering why they'd move it down the field on holding. It's a personal foul on Brandon Payne. And that's unfortunate, too, Mike. You, the Lobos don't want to start shooting themselves in the foot doing things like that. Penalties to help a drive continue when they have the momentum in this game. You don't need that against Texas Tech, that's for sure. Boy, does this look like the type of football you'd play in your backyard when you were a kid? Inside screen setup. Nice tackle coming over to make it as Nick Spiegel. Nehemiah Glover on the inside screen, and you've got to watch him when he gets the ball out there. The guy has Jets. That's, uh, you know, that, that you know, going back to your question, it does look like that, the type of playground Sandlot stuff. football, yeah. And, and you know what? It, and I can see what they're trying to do with that. The pressure is getting closer and closer to the quarterback. When If they do get pressure on him to stop him, to start hitting him and start making him think about when he's in back there throwing, that's going to be success for the Lobos. But this is high risk. No question about it. 
Pressure again, up the middle, and Gabriel Fulbright comes over to make the sack, or wait, no, Fala Fischola. Number 33 with the sack, and again, it's so good to see him come back after that ACL injury to his left knee one year ago. And watch the speed, Fala just goes around his man and makes the play on Cumbi. Now, Texas Tech, they only allow, what, like a couple of sacks last season. I mean, they're, they have those big offensive linemen there. They got two bookends there. One guy on the on one side of the line as far as the tackle, 6'6". Six, six. The other guy's a 6'7 tackle, so they have those bookends, and they don't allow a lot of that. Well, it's all about getting rid of the ball, and Cumbie and other Tech quarterbacks have done a great job of that over the years. Second check, sack for Fasola. Getting rid of it and making a great catch at the 20 for Texas Tech is Hicks, who turned around. Joey Hicks from Hearst, Texas, had to go back the opposite way, and he made the grab. He turned around, and the Lobo defender on that play lost his footing, and that could have been six easy, Mike, because the Lobo defender on that play turned around right with Hicks, lost his footing at that time, trying to get over to him, actually. And another penalty against New Mexico. And we'll find out what it is. Personal fall, contact to the helmet of the quarterback, half the distance, first down. On the blitz, there was definitely contact as Cumbie let the ball go. A hard collision, but, you know, without having uh, seen the replay it is hard to guess exactly whether that was intentional but it's the second personal foul on this drive and tech is at the nine pressure again screen set up room not quite into the end zone henderson just a little bit shy of the goal line fashola brought him down you can, you can see where the Lobos, they, they have, they seem to have a little bit more speed up front there, but at the same time, that's such high risk. There's always going to be somebody open, like the little screen. You can see the little screen forming to the right side of the screen right when the quarterback stepped back, and you knew something was developing there. And that's what, it was, what I say, it's just such high risk when you blitz like that. Second down and goal at the one. Cumbie sneaks. No signal yet, looks like he's in. And now they say he is. So Cumby, who stands 6'4", 222 pounds, gets his first rushing touchdown. When you get that close, nothing, nothing you can do sometimes in those cases when you have those big guys just pushing forward. And it looked, it looked almost like a half foot he had to go. He just leaned forward, the guy's 6'4", lay over in the end zone, he's in. That's the point try on its way. And just through the left side, and we're tied at 7-all. So New Mexico's first lead against Texas Tech since 2001 in the first quarter is now gone. We've got a whale of a game developing. Tied at 7-all at in, uh, in the first. The horns to your local Dodge dealers now, and go Lobos. Texas Tech 7, New Mexico 7, 7.51 to go first quarter. The Red Raiders, 89-yard drive, 13 plays, aided by two personal foul penalties. And a fumble that was called back. A drive to forget for the Lobo defense. Back deep, Anthony Carter at the 5. Trying to find the wedge. Back down hard, and he'll be stopped at the 18. And making the hard hit, Sylvester Brinkley for the Red Raiders special teams. And boy, he got all the Carter on that hit. 13-yard return that time for the young man. Not exactly what you would hope for your special teams. He was, he was headed for the seam, Mike. But uh, on, for, uh, on his way there, <laughs> he ran into a little traffic jam. Third drive of the game for New Mexico, third possession. The first one was three and out. The second one resulted in a touchdown after a turnover by the Red Raiders. Now at the 18. 
Make basket in motion. Not trouble against him. Now, one thing about Texas Tech, you don't think of them as a ball control type team, but when you have those short passes, you can move the ball down the field, you can maintain possession and eat up some clock too. You can eat up a lot of clock and, and you will have some success with that kind of offense just because there's always someone open. You, you just can't, there's screens and it, it, the, there's so many disguises in that offense, you just can't stop, you can't stop it completely. Dontrell Moore goes to the sidelines now. Four wide receivers. On the fly pattern. Number 87, Anthony Carter. And that one was a slow play developing. It's got to be much quicker than that. Chad Johnson came up from Shreveport, Louisiana to make the tackle. The fly play was, uh, it was uh, a big gainer for New Mexico last year when they used to run it at the uh, Adrian Bird last year. He used to get Carter, that play slow and developing, and as soon as he got around the corner, there were guys in Texas Tech jerseys waiting for him. Third down and four. High formation now. Okay, we under center. Option pull up, looking deep. Going down the field, looking for Hank Basket. Who makes the catch at the 30? It's an awesome catch by Hank Basket. Looked like what happened was Lobos looked like they were getting set to run the option and saw something that they didn't like. McCamey okay, steps back to throw the ball, and oh, he did not catch it. He did not oh, my catch goodness. It. Incomplete. Incompletion, pass. yeah. Thought it was good. Let's see where the ball came out, Mike. Or did he ever have it? And he came down. He'd lost it when he came down. Looks like it even, looks like he didn't even have it when he came down. No, never had it. Looked good. I was wondering why I wasn't celebrating more. Lobos, three and out again. Punt. Short punt, but it may take a good bounce and does. Here comes Glover. And he brings it out to about the 36-yard line. And that's where Texas Tech and Sonny Cumby will take over. The tackle made by Joe Sealander from Rio Rancho High School, a walk-on who's getting some playing time for the New Mexico Lobos, former walk-on. Now, this is what you don't want if you're in New Mexico. If you're Tech, this is working out fine for you. You want to get your offense back on the field as soon as possible. But if you're New Mexico, you want to keep that particular kind of offense off the field because those short plays, it's just like running running a gassers or something like that, running up to the line, touching, and going again, running, touching, going again because of those short routes. Here come the Red Raiders again. Long drive, 89 yards the last time they touched the ball. And it wasn't very long ago, a minute 30 on the clock. Quick little pass. This one to Henderson, who will get nothing. In fact, he'll lose a yard. Cal Coulter sniffed that play out and just came right up and, and, and kept with the uh, the running back coming out of the backfield. Didn't let him go anywhere. Good stop for the low balls. That could have ended up being something, Mike. Officially a loss of two. Kyle Coulter, along with Marcus Parker, the only experienced defensive lineman for New Mexico. And I bet when that play was developing, some of the fans probably gasped because where the pursuit was coming from on the other side of the line, Tech was going away from that, and there was a guy open on the side, the running back. Cumbie, 9 of 10 now, 58 yards. Shotgun, uncorks it again. He is 10 for 11 now. As they get back some of the lost yardage, the quick route and the look to Cody Fuller, who's brought down by Gabriel Fulbright. Clock continues to move here in the first quarter. Give Cumbie credit for just, Cumbie seems to know how to find the right guy to throw it to. You know, this same offense, I, I remember Coach Long talking earlier, some quarterbacks throw it to the wrong guys in this offense, but apparently he doesn't. Give Cumbie some credit for that. Cumbie goes over to his tight end and gives some instructions. Now changing the play, and we're going to have a stoppage in play. Timeout Texas Tech. For the second time, the clock, play clock was winding down, so Cumby has to burn his second time out. Well, the Lobos do need to stop here, Mike. They need to get this offense off the field. All right, we'll see if they can do it when we come back.
This portion of the Lobos football game is brought to you by Premier Nissan of Santa Fe. Better prices, better service, better selection. Premier Nissan, better than ever. Third down play, Red Raiders, and they convert it. Cumby is acting like a professional moving the yardsticks down the field. Right now, speaking of the field, let's go down on the field to our own Alana Lynn. Alana? All right, Mike, it is really, really loud down here. It could account for Texas Tech's two timeouts and already, you know, five minutes left in the, in the game, the first half. Right, five, five minutes left in the quarter, and they've already had to use two of their timeouts because they couldn't get a playoff. And no official attendance as of yet, but uh, definitely a, a tremendous crowd here tonight. Not a sellout, but probably in the mid-30 range. Four for four on third down conversions, Texas Tech. The Lobo defense hasn't made it happen. Ball batted down. They do right there. Coming up from the linebacker spot to get his hand on that ball, it looks like Mike Mahorek, the young man out of Highland High School. Right when you called it, don't cue, Mike. Watch Mike Mahorek gets his big mitts up to knock this ball down. Cumbie looking to his left, and Mahorek there. Good read by Mahorek just to stay with the, the quarterback to watch his eyes and to jump up when he saw him cocked back. What a terrific player he was for Judge Chavez at Highland High School, two-way player. Now a linebacker for the Lobos. Second down and 10. Going for the money. Far sidelines. And it's caught. Inside the 15-yard line. And making the catch is Jared Hicks, who burned Brandon Payne on the far side. And you know, Jarrell Malone might remember Texas Tech from last year. Now they're working on Brandon Payne. Payne just outrun. Uh, that's the advantage belongs to the offensive guy because he knows where the ball is going. The defender has to read his eyes and to be able to turn back and make a play when the ball gets there. So Brandon, if he had another step on him, would have been able to block that ball. Give the Texas Tech receiver credit for sticking with it and making a great catch at the end. One-handed catch down there. Ball right on the 15-yard line. And a whistle, the flag flies in. Perhaps encroachment. Little discussion, and Rocky Long none too happy with that. Rocky 0-4 against Texas Tech, trying to end that drive. This offense is going to just keep marching down the field until the Lobos are able to get some legitimate Number pressure defense, on Cumbie. I mean, five yards, not, not for just one time, but they down. need to hit him a couple of times as we watch the big gainer. Well, no, actually, this is the encroachment from the Lobos, you see. And you could see the left tackle moved and the right guard, it looked like. And Tech has a first down at the 10, or rather, yeah, first and five at the 10. Across the middle. Terrific catch again. Those short passes are just eating New Mexico up. Glover with the catch. Art Haynes on the coverage. And that's something like a little shuttle pass on that play. Lobo's making some changes now on defense. Now look at all the, well he has just a little time to get rid of that ball. And that's actually a dangerous play, place to throw the ball. But if the Lobos can't make a play on those balls like that, they're gonna, they're gonna just keep going. First and goal at the five, looping it into the end zone, a little bit too strong. Once again, Hicks was the intended receiver, and Jarrell Malone was there on the coverage. Pretty good coverage that time. Great coverage. I'm sure, like I said earlier, Jarrell Malone remembers the Texas Tech game because they really picked on him last year. Well, he was a newcomer to the team at that time, kind of getting his baptism under fire. And that's the one thing about this high-risk Lobos defense. I mean, you're out on an island as a corner, so you, you have to be with your man. Well, that's six. Try to run for it. Henderson up the middle, and again, touchdown. Just over the end line. Nick Spiegel got to him a little bit too late. And Texas Tech in front for the first time tonight. For Henderson, that's his first touchdown of the season. Now the Lobo offense, if, if they're going to keep up with this team, the Lobo offense, they have to do better than three and out because Tech will drive. They're going to have big plays. They're going to drive up and down the field all night until you stop them. That's just how their offense works. Farlika's kick slides on through, and the Red Raiders 
1,400 unanswered points now to lead New Mexico 14-7 with 3.45 to go in the first quarter of play. Look at the replay on the touchdown, Mike. So watch Henderson gives the ball. Little stutter step. Following his blocking, just heading straight for the end zone. Spiegel had gotten there a step earlier. That would have been stopped. Nice cut in direction. As he, like I said, he's looking where the blocks were being made for him. Following his blocking. On the sidelines, Rocky Log extremely unhappy. Well, you know, that that's uh, we, we have the benefit of instant replay here, and, and I can understand why Coach might be a little bit frustrated. First of all, there was the fumble that was clearly not a fumble, and it was returned for a touchdown. Then there was that movement on the line there, so he's probably, he, he, he hadn't even seen the replay, so when he sees that, he's going to be even more mad. Anthony Carter, D.D. Cox, back deep for New Mexico. This Lobo offense really has done nothing here in the first quarter. They have a touchdown, but that was after a turnover. The penalties, doesn't seem like there's a big disparity. Lobos have three for 30 yards. Tech has one for 10 yards, but it's always the timing of those that uh, is often the most painful. Now the kick. Here's Carter at the two. Trying to come out. He's going to be well short of the 20-yard line. He had a nice wall opening up for him to his left, Mike, and he decided to go the other way, went right, and ran right into the traffic. And I know on the field it's a different story when you're just running straight ahead. But he would have, would have gotten at least maybe five more yards going to the left. First time it was a 13-yard return. Second time a 15-yard return. And when your offense is struggling, you, you hope you can get a little bit of a boost from your special teams. Here comes New Mexico again. Cole McKamey under center. Just two carries so far for Dontrell Moore. They've got three. And there's his, one of his best runs of the night. I think he had a four-yard carry, and this will be about three. Of course, Dontrell, like most running backs, the good ones anyway, they get better as the game goes on. They get their rhythm and fully expect that to happen tonight to Dontrell Moore. If New Mexico doesn't get too far behind, or they need to start throwing the ball. I know you, you talked about rhythm. It seems like Tech has established its rhythm on offense, which is making it could make a very long day for New Mexico. The, the New Mexico's offense needs to try to do the same thing right here. Lobos with just one first down. Second and seven. And that's well short. I'm not sure if it was tipped at the line of scrimmage or not. He was looking for Carter. But that one fell well short. Fell a little bit short. It, uh, I don't, don't know if he could have met that ball a little bit. The ball was tipped, as we can see on the replay here, Mike. The ball was tipped. Texas Tech lineman actually tipped that ball, and that's why Carter couldn't get to it. Well, Cole McCamey, a slow start. One for five, only eight yards, and the Lobos are 0 of 2 on third down tries. They need seven yards, need to get to the 28. They try it on the quarterback draw, and that's not going to work. The linebacker stayed home for Texas Tech. John Saldi, the junior from South Lake, Texas, was there to make the stop. Yeah, they, they really didn't have Tech fooled at all on that play, Mike. If they were thinking that they were going to back out, you know, that draw, that's what that draw is good for as far as making the, the, uh, the guys on the line, the linebackers and the defensive linemen decide whether they're going to continue to pass rush or even drop back in coverage. The linebackers dropping back in coverage, and the linebackers didn't bite on it at all. Tyler Goss is ready to punt it away. He's had two punts, averaging 52 yards. Nehemiah Glover awaits at about the 25. This will be a low liner, but it's another deep one. Right out the 25 for Glover. Up the middle to about the 31 before he's swarmed on. Nick Spiegel there, along with number 45 for New Mexico. And, and that is Joe Sealander again, doing a good job. A couple of area products on the special team. 
Well, Texas Tech, known for their passing attack, and as well they should, but they have two rushing touchdowns tonight for a total of, of five yards rushing in this game. I was just getting ready to say they have two rushing touchdowns from with the half foot line. <laughs> Pass all the way down the field, run it in. Very frustrated Rocky Long. There's Mike Leach in his fifth year at Texas Tech. Got to stop Cumby. Down the middle, open again is Glover. Wide open was Glover. He beat Art Haynes there, and now Cumby, four of 17 tonight for over 130 yards. Look at Cumby. Just he, he looks all over the field, Mike, and he knows where his guys are going to be. And the Lobos can make this is going to start turning into a very long evening if they let Tech just drive down the field and, and keep doing this because the defense is going to get tired after so many times. They can only take so many reps. No sacks, only a couple of hurries. Cumby has just looked like he's a veteran out there rather than a, a first-year starter. Now the handoff up the middle, spinning and gaining one or two is Johnny Mack. Sounds like a, it's like his nickname, Johnny Mack. I know it does. His name. Young man from Lakeland, Florida. You know, I think it's something to be said about uh, being an understudy, standing on the sideline, watching the game from a different point of view, playing scout team and all that, because Texas Tech's system is just set up like that. I mean, these guys come in, they wait their turn to play. When they get in, they don't miss a beat. Cumby, 14 of 17, 144 yards. Gets out of trouble. Has some room, and it's complete. Spreading the ball around to Trey Haverty, who made the catch. You know, after first starting out with a couple of drops and stuff like that, the Texas Tech receiver, receivers have now started hanging on to the ball big time as we watch Haverty make this grab here. Just good concentration. Knew he was getting hit from two sides, from the back and from the side. Still watched the ball and brought it in. Earlier this week, Rocky Long said he didn't know if Cumbie could scramble as we get a flag here, maybe an illegal substitution. Too many men on the field, perhaps, for Texas Tech. At any rate, it will be a five-yard penalty. But Coach Long didn't know if Cumbie could scramble because he didn't really have to last week against SMU. Illegal substitution. They broke the huddle with 12 players, five yards, still first down. Number 11. But I am impressed with the way Cumby has managed to sidestep a tackler here or there. Yeah. He's not real nimble, but he's, he's good enough. He's able to do it when he has to. And now it's first and 15. Winding down here in the first quarter of play. In the pocket, down the field. New Mexico gets a break, and that's Gabe Fulbright making the interception, and maybe, maybe that's what the Lobo defense needs. Gabe Fulbright was stride for stride with his man and just broke on the ball at their perfect time to make the catch right into the basket. It looked like the pass was for him. It was such a well-thrown ball, and it went right to him. He broke right in front of his man at the right time, Mike. As we look at the replay, Cumbie's looking. Gabe Fulbright running stride for stride with his man. Just came and zipped right in front of him, right when the ball was going to get there. That's the fifth career interception for Gabe Fulbright. Had three of them last year at San Diego State. He's been in the doghouse of the UNM coaches. We'll tell you why as we move along here, but certainly getting out of it right now. Option. Pitch. Dangerous pitch on the ground. Tech has it. And the Red Raiders get the ball right back. Let's see. Yeah, the signal is Texas Tech. There is a flag on the field, too. Let's look and see if he had control. And now the defense has to go back on the field. What a crusher. Ball is still loose, and it's picked up, and clearly there didn't look to be any problems with that. And the runner stepped out of bounds prior to the ball coming loose. Therefore, New Mexico retains the ball. 
Well, that frankly looked to be a terrible call, but it's going to go New Mexico's favor. He wasn't anywhere near the correction. Texas Tech's ball, first and ten at that spot. What is going on? This is unbelievable, Mike. Now, I, I do believe that's the right call, but come on, guys, let's get it together down there. Dead ball, personal foul on Texas Tech, 15 yards back from the end of the play, first and 10. Well, the referee tonight is Tom Allers. That's who you've been hearing from. Yeah, this, this, now let's see if he's out of, out of bounds when this ball, let's see what, Dontrell should have probably had that ball. That's a bad effort by Dontrell. Oh, look at that. He oh never had possession. Gosh. Never had possession oh. of the ball. Never had possession of the ball. That's two breaks for Texas Tech. Now, That's 14 points right now, there. Now, the only thing I would say is, did somebody from Texas Tech recover it after he fumbled it? He was already out of bounds, Mike. But if he was out of bounds and he didn't have possession of the ball at that time. And, and but the ball went out with him. Well, if that's the case, then it should be New Mexico. Yeah, that's that's bad. Down the middle, and out of the hands of number 24 for Texas Tech. And that's a young man who's had a big night, Cody Fuller. All right, maybe if we can, that last replay was a good one to see exactly what happened as the flag flies again. All right, here it is. Here's the pitch to Dontrell. Kind of high, but he, he could have had it. Still doesn't have still it. Still doesn't have it. Still doesn't see, have it. It's on the ground, and that's what I'm saying. Maybe the ball should is should be ruled dead with 45 making the fumble recovery. Right. They, they really. So, so you know. It's a blow. Guess, it's blown. <laughs> one way or the other. That's the conclusion. It's a blown call. 19 of the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. Henderson, the running back with the hold. And of course, part of being a good official is the game management and making the right calls to the to the official and, and making the right calls even if it takes a while. And and of course, there was uh, much confusion right there right. after that sequence. It's embarrassing, Mike. First down at 20. Time for Cumbi. Gets rid of the short one. And uh, that will bring up a second down and long with the short pass to Henderson right there. And you can see Henderson coming out of the backfield, and he was waiting to see what was going to happen as far as uh, waiting to see what kind of trouble his quarterback was going to be in. Just kind of sat back there like he was in a zone almost, like he was going to set up for a screen almost and just came running out. Let's go back to the previous play. A couple of things could have happened. It, it, the ball was loose there. Oh, the fumble. On the, on the okay. fumble. On the fumble. All right. Well, let's talk about it when we come back. The time has expired. <laughs> I can gather my thoughts and try to explain what I saw. Van can do the same. We'll do that with New Mexico trailing 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. All right, let's see if we can explain what happened on that fumble by New Mexico. Let's take a look at it now. Nazi Reardon is number 26 coming up here. And the question is, he never had possession of the ball, Van, but was he stepped out? Did he step out of bounds while he had at least partial control of it? Still loose, still loose. There still he steps out of bounds. Steps out of bounds. And so Texas Tech Stratton picks it up right there, as you saw there. So maybe ultimately it should have been Texas Tech's ball but we never had any explanation from the officials. And number 26, if he was out of bounds, even when he didn't have control of it, it still should have been out at that point. Right. It's just that that's two plays right there. I mean, well, there were three of them you can think of. And I know those guys are trying to do the best that they can do, but boy, that, that, one, was, that one was one of the wackiest ones I've seen in quite a while. Very wacky. Of course, then they topped it off by saying it was New Mexico's ball, which, of course, got everybody all excited here. Right. And then took it back. All right. Second down. 17 to go for the Red Raiders. Inside screen. And there was confusion by the Red Raider lineman as the ball 
hits to the turf. And speaking of getting hit, how about Glover holding his right side? He took a real shot by Nick Speaker. Yeah, it looked like the Lobos are really coming off the line. I mean, they that they look like maybe that play fired him up a little bit because they're they're coming off the ball a little bit harder there. And, and Nehemiah Glover did take a big shot. All right, we're just starting the second quarter. Four seconds in. Texas Tech leads 14-7. Lobos answered first, but then the offense has done nothing since. Red Raiders, four for four on third down. This is a little trickier. Yeah, they're running bunch here on the left side, Mike. Lobos coming with the blitz. Picked up. Cumbie has some room. Gets rid of it. Crossed the field. It's batted away. Terrific job coming over from his safety spot, Josh Bassanek. And that is one of the rare times that they've stopped. Is this the first time they stopped him? This is the first time on, this, aside from the turnover early in the game. Josh Bazinet, the former West Mesa star, great wrestler there, coming over to make the defensive play. And now Texas Tech will attempt a long field goal, about 49 yards. And their kicking game has been good through the years, Mike, so they're very capable of tacking on these three points. Alex Tralika from the right hash mark. Good snap. The hole is good on its way. And the kick will be wide right. So the Lobo defense stops the Texas Tech offense. Just a little bit wide right. Last week, Keith Toogood was the place kicker against SMU. Missed a field goal and extra point. I don't think he made the trip this week. They made the immediate change. It looked like I just saw, just for very brief, a smile on Rocky's face. <laughs> and New Mexico's offense will have its best field position outside of that turnover drive. And D.D. Cox is in the game, Mike. D.D. Cox had 187 yards against Tech last year. Yes, he did. Went in for the injured Dontrell Moore in the second quarter and had a great game, one of the best ever for a running back against Texas Tech. Basket in motion. Now Cox has it up the middle. And he gets through the hole, but then goes sideline and sideline and makes uh, maybe a gain of one before Adele Duckett makes the tackle. And that's a typical D.D. Cox run, but D.D. has a lot of explosions, explosiveness in his speed. D.D. is one of those runners. He's more of a power runner, gets to the line, can make stuff happen, and if you don't, if you don't wrap him up, he can get about 40 or 50 yards on you. Young man transferred from Oklahoma State, second year in the program. He's a senior. Cole McCamey, one of five for eight yards. Fly series, end around reverse. Here comes Basket. He needs some help. And didn't get much there, maybe a yard or two. And that will bring up third down. John Saldi with the tackle there. And, and really, that's not a bad play, whether you gain anything or not, because you get Texas Tech thinking. You can put that in in uh, early in the game and, and at least show your hand a little bit. Right. You know, as we watch the replay, that that kind of that keeps the defense on their toes as far as they got to th start thinking about, like, like what you just said. They got to think about there might be some gadget plays as we watch Hank come around the end there coming up and you know this is just going to set up some other players later some of the basic plays that the Lobos run maybe set up an option play or something like that later. New Mexico has struggled on third down. 0 for 3. McCamey steps up has some room and he's going to get the first down and more. Up to the 50 inside Texas Tech territory Mike Smith of Lubbock pushed him out of bounds. And that's the athleticism that Cole McCamey can bring to the table. And I think, Mike, what an uh, important thing he did as we watched the replay here, Cole looked downfield, saw his men were covered, saw Hank, his main guy was covered, looked like his tight end was free, dragging the middle there, but he needed to first down. He looked... something and make something happen in double coverage. It's a great decision by Cole McCamey right there, Mike. McCamey has the touchdown for New Mexico on the ground. That was a career-long 15-yard run for McCamey. Cox the lone setback, fake to him. Time down the middle, open. 
is Nick Basket, and he makes the catch. And that's why you love to have a seven-foot high jumper on your receiving team. Great play action pass, a fake to D.D. Cox. Some of the linebackers stayed up and watched for it. They, they did not drop back and cover, stayed up, trying to honor that. Hank going downfield, open. Ball laid right up in his hands. And like you said, that's why you got a guy who can jump seven feet going out there for a receiving pass. You know, this was this could have easily had turned into six points if if, if the uh, defender for Texas Tech didn't get up immediately and make the play on Hank. All right, Lobo offense in business. We'll find out what they can do when we come back. Sandia Casino over Casino over 1,700 loose reasons to visit I-25 and Tramway, the place to play when the Lobo game is over. And I've seen the pictures. This is reminiscent of Vance's punk rock days. <laughs> oh oh <right> yeah, <laughs> look at that man. Who who does that guy's hair? I'm sure the person who did it does not want us to mention it because they would lose business. <laughs> Great shot right there. Beautiful night for football. Lobos in the red zone at the 14. And last season, New Mexico converted on 90% of their tries. 46 of 51, and 32 of those were touchdowns. Trail Moore back in. Weasels his way to, down to about the 12 yard line, maybe to the 11. And again, what this offense has done very little tonight, especially the running game, and we always want to point to the running backs, but this line needs to move some players off the ball, and they have not done it yet tonight. You know, they started out uh, a couple times. They started out with a couple plays up the middle where, where it looked like they were getting some, some movement off the ball, but after that, it just all closed up. Second down play. Moore, the lone setback. Two tight ends. Basket in motion. The fake, the pump, and wide left as, again, he was looking for the young man, Anthony Carter, the junior college transfer from Scottsdale Community College. That pass became a little dangerous after that fake and pump because they, uh, the yes. Tech defenders were on to it. The guy right behind Carter could have come up and made the play on that ball. Long time in developing. And now, third and eight. Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator. Let's see what he can come up with here. This time, McCamey's under center. Pitch back this way. Here's Dontrell Moore. And he's going to be short of the first down. And i got to be honest with you, it didn't look like he ran very hard on that play. It looked like, he's, it looked like he was slowing down, trying to, trying to cut back. It looked like he was going to go to his left. Let's see where he... He started stutter stepping. He turned the corner. See, he's not running that hard. He's looking downfield. See, right there, maybe you, maybe you just run hard instead of shaking and baking, and you got the first down. And what is going on now? Some discussion out on the field. And New Mexico on fourth down and three. May have been some confusion down there about what play it was or what down. And the officials are going to take a time out here to sort things out. Wow. <laughs> this is turning into the game official tape of shame, man. We're going to put this on. <laughs> what is going on in this game? And you see Claude Terrell there talking to the, the referee at Allers, and Claude is one of the co-captains for New Mexico, trying to get an explanation of what's going on. Wow. Fred Threat looking on there, number 97 for Texas Tech. Now, you, you think this is what they'll show you at the seminar, like if you're going to be a game official? This All right, year. another explanation, I think. No, we're not going to get one. Now, New Mexico may have taken the time out here. But I don't think that was ever indicated. On the scoreboard, it says UNM has two left. Texas Tech with zero, and I'm not sure if either one of those is right. Well, 
New go Mexico for will go for it on fourth down. 0 of 1 last week against Washington State. They need to get to the four. Looking for basket. Who? Does he make the catch? Yes. yes. Hank Basket with the catch from Paul McCamey. And right there, Mike, is one of those plays that the Lobos would have got eaten alive on talk ra on, on uh, sports radio after the game if they didn't make that play and if and if this game turns out funny. Because that's a, that was a, a big risk right there. Hank Basket, guy can jump out of the gym, you throw it to the corner, and I don't think they ever have been unsuccessful on that particular play. Hank Basket hauls it in, makes the catch. His first touchdown of the year and his sixth touchdown of his career. Extra point, and after all of this, folks, after all of the confusion <laughs> and all of the offense that goes awry, New Mexico has tied it up at 14 all. 11.47 to go, second quarter. We'll be back after this. This portion of Lobo football is brought to you by RBC Mortgage Company. RBC Mortgage Company is a proud sponsor of Lobo Athletics. And there's Hank Basket, junior from Clovis, and, and he has turned into a remarkable story. Obviously a great athlete, but you know, he was almost, he was paralyzed for a while, about a, two years ago, and he came back to develop into a great wide receiver, and he just outmuscled the corner for the football. Sure did. Both guys fight for, for position on that ball, and Hank, the bigger and the stronger guy of the two, wins the battle. Almost caught it between his thighs right there, and a great <laughs> job on the coverage, guys. That was wonderful. Ready to kick it away. And back deep, Vincent Meeks and Johnny Mack. Kenny Bird will do the place kicking here now. Young man from St. Pius will try to get the ball into the end zone. It's on its way to Mack. Stuttering and hit hard by Nick Spiegel. Well, they credited Nick with only three tackles last week, and that's hard to believe because the young man uh, plays a heck of a football game, and he's already had two or three tackles on special teams tonight. Only a nine-yard return. Kind of reminds you of a guy who used to wear 44 as we watched the replay coming up here. The guy who used to wear 44 and play for the Lobos, that stick. Now watch, watch this. I saw on him, and he just blows up the runner at the end. Oh, my God. Watch this. Nowhere to go. Actually has some assists coming in from some of his other teammates, too. How about number 54, Chad Hill? He just said, get out of my way. Glover in motion, but before the play develops, we have a whistle and a flag. Look like somebody moves on the offensive line there, Mike. But I don't want to say that. That might not be the case. Well, could be anything, because this has been a strange the snap. Ball start. Number 75 on the offense remains first down. No. Oh. E.J. E. Whitley from Texas City with the uh, little motion, and I bet those players love it that their numbers are going to be called out now. How do you feel about that rule? But getting their numbers called out? Yeah. That's, that's embarrassing. It'll make you be more disciplined. I mean, you won't jump the gun. <laughs> You'll be exposed, Mike. For all to see. First and 15 now at the 19-yard line. Changing the play. Now going downfield, the sidelines. Looks like he has his man and does. What a beautiful pass and catch. And Hicks beat his man on the corner right there. Looked like Brandon Payne was the initial uh, man that was supposed to be there along with Josh Bazinet. But Hicks beat them both. And you know some of, you know, Payne and, and Bazinet were both looking in this guy's eyes and going, uh-oh, here comes the ball because they see him coming back and cutting to his left. And it's just a, that's, that's where you want the ball at. Actually, that ball could have been on the other side of the shoulder. Would have been, well, no, that was, that's right where you want it. We're not going to be picky about, about that one, are you? That was no, that was nice. That was nice. 30 yards on the pass play. Hicks, four catches, 89 yards. Oh, another stick by Spiegel. 
Wow. Art Haynes was there first to make the tackle, but it was Spiegel that was putting the hurt on him. Now Spiegel was just, <laughs> Spiegel must, he's got some attitude tonight. Not to, not to say that he doesn't always play with attitude. Now watch the receiver just get blown up. That had to hurt, Mike. I know that stung. Gain of just two, second and eight at the 47, just shy of the 50. Cumby, pressure, Bassinet looking to get to him, and Cumby throws it away. Fans here, I think, wanted intentional grounding. But there were a lot of Red Raiders over there. That's the beauty of that offense, when you got guys running, all running for, uh, I mean, the way that offense worked, it was like they're almost like in kind of like zone pattern for receivers, just running all over the place. And he just throws it over there, and it's going to look like it. They're going to call roughing on Zach, uh, uh, Josh Bazinet because at the end of the play, well, he probably should have stopped right there. Well, I'm, I'm st I still hadn't seen a flag yet. I've seen a discussion. I believe they're going to call it on him. Well, Texas Tech isn't aware of any penalty. Looks like they're talking about it now. These guys, these guys really need to get control of this game. This, this is getting to be. Oh, here comes the flag. Oh, let's hear what it is. Intentional grounding by the quarterback. No. Oh. Then the Lobos catch a break. Did look like intentional grounding, but. Well, let's let's see here. And you heard him say the ball did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Sure didn't. Ball just dropped right there, but you can see it in the back of the lineman. It's almost like he threw at their ankles. Well, what happens if the intended receiver is in the backfield and you throw it at his feet? Is that intentional grounding? No, that wouldn't be. Well, that's sort of what that play but the, was. But none of those guys, the, the guys uh, who were running around there, they weren't eligible for it. No, pass. there was number 19. Did you see Torian, number 19 now? Yeah, Torian oh, Anderson was okay. right in the middle of that. Okay. And Texas Tech wasting no time. They want to get a playoff here. There's a lot of confusion as to where the ball should be spotted and what down it is. It should be a loss of down. Officially, they're saying it's second down and what is that? Almost 20, 18 yards. Now it's a third down play. Downfield and batted away by New Mexico. Great coverage by the Lobos corners and safety coming up, helping each other out to get that done. It Charles, was a, it Charles was Brown team. was the, excuse me, man, the defensive player who came on over. You can watch him come over, Mike, for help on the replay here. A little pushing and shoving going on early. Texas Tech receiver looking back, and that nearly, that, could, that ball could have been easily picked off, Mike. Well, Linus are, and Lucy were not there, but Charlie Brown was. <laughs> I think Charlie Brown has been at the game the whole time, Mike. And I'm, I'll just stop right there. Hat. <laughs> yeah. Dontrell Moore back deep to receive the punt. First Texas Tech punt, and they're not going to get this off, but oh, somehow they do. And the ball will be touched dead at the 36. How was that not blocked? Bassinet was in there. In fact, I think he was waiting for the punter to put his foot on the ball, or maybe he should have just made a tackle. I think, he, well, you know, maybe his hands aren't, he doesn't have those big hands like you, Mike. You, we, we know your hands, are, he, your hands are bigger than mine, and I'm 6'6", six, six, and you're a little shorter than me. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. Let's see if we can see what happened on this. Ball skirts the ground, and wow. Looks like he was going to, you know what, he just ran right by. Ran right he by. Could, he could not stop and put his hand in place of the ball. Ran right by it. It looks like he was trying to pick up the fumble, too, though, didn't it? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but the Lobos have the ball with 10.44 left. They'll try the drop back off the option. Downfield to Hank Baskin. First down to Mexico at the 47-yard line of Texas Tech. Now, it seems like the Lobos are trying to establish a little momentum of their own now. The offense is finally starting to work a little bit. And Tech's defense is starting to stay out on the field just a little bit longer. Maybe they're tiring just a bit. As, as we watch the replay, Hank Basket running just a nice route. 
and making the grab. Cole McCamey standing there and just throwing the ball. He had great protection, had plenty of time to throw the ball. McCamey was one for five at one point. He's now four of his last four. Basket in motion. Goes back the other way now. Contrell Moore. No hole there. That offensive line having trouble against the Red Raiders. And now a flag flies, and we're going to get a personal foul on somebody. It looked like, what was that, Claude Terrell? Well, Claude was in on it, but I'm not sure if if he's going to be the guilty party or not. I just saw a Tech guy get pushed. Dead ball, personal foul, 36 to the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. All right, Mike, let's try to figure out what happened here. 36 on the defense, let's see what happened. Oh, okay, oh, he's, Claude was just protecting himself. Antonio Hoffman, the guilty party there. You know, easily, you, you could have easily let that one go, too, yeah. because both of those guys were hitting each other, in all fairness, to Tech. Well, if you, if you, it looks like you throw a punch. He started it, yeah. And, you know, you, you got to be careful about that. And I think that was the case there. Well, Claude may have been pushing late. If there's a difference between pushing and the throwing a punch, as we saw there. He did. We saw the shot to the helmet. What's going on now? There's another discussion, Mike. And now the referee will go on over to the Texas Tech sidelines and try to give an explanation. This may end up being the longest game in University of New Mexico history. You know what? This reminds me of the Three Stooges episode with Mo, Larry, and Curly. And uh, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> All right, I'll let you. 14-14 our score. Rocky Long over to talk to the defensive backs for New Mexico. Of course, Rocky was a quarterback here at UNM and went on to play defensive back professionally in the Canadian Football League and World Football League. And uh, he's developed into a terrific defensive coach. Yeah, he was a tough, tough quarterback, too. You know, now he's, he's a tough coach. Look at that, Mike. Look, look at Rocky's all... When uh, Jim Rome had his tour stop here, he was talking about how buff Rocky is. If you, if, if you had all the coaches in college football and you had them like in a smackdown or something, I'm taking Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Even with those bad knees. Yeah, Rocky I, I spends, think he'll be all right, though. Rocky spends a lot of time in, in the weight room. Yes, he does. Wow. This game, this is... All right, now we're going to get an explanation to Rocky Long. I hope he gives us an explanation. Are they going to call it offsetting penalties? Somebody has called a timeout here. And I'm not sure who it is. And now he's... Motioning for Texas Tech to come on over. Let's see if we can get this thing started. And then there's one here, and that's it. That's all there is left. All the way back there? Those are the ones. Man. This is like, yeah, just unbelievable, Mike. Right? I don't think I've ever seen. Have you seen a game like this? I haven't. Uh, no, I really haven't. I mean, we're, we're only a quarter old, a little better than a quarter. And apparently what has happened is the officials have warned both benches to quit, tell their players to quit being so chippy. No more cheap shots, no more personal fouls. Let's get it together. And that may have been what's happened here. But it's back to the game, and Dr. Moore had a little bit of a seam, and he'll gain about four yards, takes it to the 30. Brought down by Fletcher Session, sophomore from Tyler, Texas. Every time Don Trell gets a carry, he's getting stronger because, I mean, that's just how he runs. I don't know, you know, like you said, a good running backs. I mean, he, you, you start, when he started getting around his eighth and ninth carry, we'll start seeing him exploding. And, and I, that's just the way it is. Now, so far, seven carries, 22 yards for more. He needs to get 28 more yards to become the all-time leading rusher in Mountain West Conference history. Now, McCamey scrambling out. 
hanging on to the ball. He better tuck that ball away. Well, he is. He got back to the line of scrimmage before he was pushed out by Mike Smith. And uh, Adele Duckett was there to help out as well. So McKamey doing a good job of scrambling, but not picking up any yardage now. That will bring up a third down and six. That's better than last the, the last time out, Mike, against Washington State when he forced a couple of those balls. Right, exactly. Good good double coverage. You know, you, you want to hang on to it. At least you still have the football, even if you're on your own line of scrimmage. You, you, you're back on your same line of scrimmage. Third down for New Mexico. Will the Red Raiders bring the heat? McKamey sets up the screen to Dontrell Moore. He's got some room. Cuts back. Stumbles and is brought down at the six. Wow. One hand away from getting into the end zone, and that was Vincent Meeks who put the paw out. And you saw the speed of Dontrell Moore as that play set itself up beautifully. Nice screenplay as we see the replay here. Dontrell, Cole pulling out, and Dontrell coming over. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, there's the dump. Blockers are out in front. Dontrell, all he has to do is run. Nothing but green grass in front of him. Takes a cut inside and just, uh, he lost his footing. He lost his footing. He may have got tangled with one of the defensive players. At any rate, New Mexico, first and goal at the five. McKamey, and he's into the end zone and the Lobos are back in front. Nice tough run by Cole McKamey. Decided to keep the ball on the option instead of the pitch. That would have been a dangerous pitch if he decided to do it because Tech had already come up to the line. Safeties had filled the holes up. Took it into the end zone. Now the Lobos enjoying their advantage again. Second rushing touchdown tonight for Cole McKamey. Good lead block again. This time by Landrick Brody, the fullback. And he's a low mate. Yes, he is. Wes Sucker on to add the extra point, and he does. And really, after a disastrous, in large part, tail end of the first quarter, first part of the second, the Lobos have regrouped nicely to take the lead, 21-14. Those two running touchdowns might have to wait. Lobo football is brought to you by Cross Country Auto Sales. Cross Country Auto Sales is New Mexico's number one independent used car dealer. Cross Country says, go Lobos. Cole McCamey took it in from short yardage on the option. His second touchdown of the night, he did a good job of reading this. Once you can see how fast, and look, look, nowhere really for him to go, but up the middle like that, well, through the side, Mike. Dontrell running like he was going to take a pitch, but Cole knew it wasn't going to happen right away. That scoring drive, six plays, 64 yards, minute 51. You can really see Cole's speed once again, like the first touchdown. Once he turns that corner, he has, he has some acceleration. Back deep for Texas Tech, Johnny Mack, along with number 21, Ryan Bishop. Kenny Bird's kick will be taken by Bishop at the 10. 20, 25, and brought down at around the 28-yard line. 8.47 to go, first half of play. It has been an interesting game, to say the least. Lobo scored right out of the gate after a turnover, but then the offense couldn't do anything, and... Now a nice rally in the second quarter to make it 21 to 14. Let's go down on the sidelines now with our Alana Lynn. Alana? All right, Mike, after that last touchdown, Coach Looper came over and said, we need one more score before, the, before half. One more score. And uh, as a little note, Hank Basket yelled at uh, Cole, I love you, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, you don't get that type of insight on every telecast. That's good. All right. I love you, man. Down the field, tipped in the air, no. Now that was good defense, good coverage by New Mexico secondary. Great coverage by the secondary. And and it looks like maybe, maybe, I don't want to say it too pre prematurely, but maybe some of the pressure, Lobos aren't getting a whole lot of pressure on Cumbie, but they are getting back there and making him hurry a little bit. It's starting to affect what's going on downfield, along with the good coverage, too. Again, New Mexico's playing a defense they have not played at least in recent memory, 
with six defensive backs, two down linemen. Let's see, what is that? And uh, three linebackers and six DBs. Second down play, they'll try to run for it. And spinning his way downfield is Nehemiah Glover, but he is tripped up by Charles Brown again. But there's Spiegel trying to force his way up. Cumbie gets rid of it. It's completed, isn't it? Yes, it is. Glover with the grab. And again, he's not very big. 5'8", 182 pounds. And he took a shot from Josh Bassinet. Tough guy. Glover just like to energize the bunny, man. Keeps going and going. Takes a hard shot. Gets right back up. And look at this, Mike. Watch the shot he takes. Wants to get right back up right away because Bassinet just levels him right on the side there. Glover gets back up to let him know, hey, look, I can do this all day, but he's probably seeing stars right now. It's just a mind game. That's all it is. First down play. Off the corner, Bazinet's picked up. Cumbie has some room. And he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and pick up one, maybe two yards before he's brought down. Ken West was there. Oh, here we go again. Flag just came up. Personal foul, I'm sure. Well, this New Mexico team has had a tendency in recent years to pick up those personal fouls, those dead ball penalties. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, number 23, followed by ejection. Oh, my goodness. Gabriel Fulbright, the starting corner, picks up the foul and is thrown out of the game. And maybe we can see it here. There's Fulbright off to the left there. He's number 23, and maybe we'll get a chance to look at it. Milwaukee's giving him an earful. Yes, he is. So Fulbright is done. And Rocky just moves on to the next thing, which is calling the defensive play. And maybe we'll get a chance to look at that replay to see if we know what happened, find out what happened. And Rocky talking to the linesman on the near sidelines. Ball at the 35. Now it is the Texas Tech first down. Gumby is thrown for more than 200 yards here in the first half. Hand off up the middle. On the draw play. Not much going there. Nick Mike Beagle is there, first of all, to bring down uh, Torian Henderson. And maybe we can see the play. Watch for 11 and 23. Off to the left. You can see it right there. And now the push and the ejection. I well, it should have been both of them. Well, I don't see what the ejection was for. But the game official told them that if, if there's another personal foul, there's going to be the foul and an ejection. So the players knew that. That's like an interception. Is it? No. No. Well, I got to be honest with you, Brandon, as Brandon Payne almost picked that off, I think that's horrible. But for a little push and a little look in the face, you're kicked out of the game. But Don't Mike, like it. I think it's consistent with the way the game's been going. <laughs> Can you argue with me? Yeah, you no, you can't, see? <laughs> that Fulbright, that, that, that he looks, he, I know how, what he's thinking. Look at his face right now. Oh, man. He feels, he feels like a stupid nut. Yeah. He feels bad. That's it's football out there, and, and certainly we've seen a lot worse than that. But that's only me. Bassinet put the pressure on, and the ball is incomplete on third down. You know, Covey's starting to get hit a little bit, and, and, and after a while, we'll get to see if he is as sure. tough as uh, Simmons and Kings, Kingsbury. Kingsbury and Simmons, especially Simmons, he, he could get hit, and it didn't matter. Right. We'll see how this guy is. Glover is the injured player for Texas Tech downfield at about the 17-yard line. And you know that shot he took from uh, Josh Bazinet is just not starting to kick in, Mike. Looked like he's trying to get his win back. Hopefully it's nothing more than that. And it looks like he'll be all right. Yeah. Or maybe a cramp. Is he limping a little bit? A little bit there, yeah.
Now fourth down, eight yards to go as Glover slowly heads to the far sideline. Fourth and eight, 6-11 to go, second quarter. Let's see what Texas Tech decides to do now. I don't see the kicker out there. Last week, they went for fourth down seven times against SMU. They were three of seven. Oh, yeah, they're going to go for it. They need to get right on the 25-yard line. Changing the play. Clock down to five. They get it off. Pressure up the middle. Humby overthrows his man. It was a little bit high, maybe catchable, but it looked to me that that it that Jarrett Hicks probably was going to be out of bounds anyway. Well, that's what happens when you start getting hit a little bit. You, you put a little bit extra on the ball, and then and, and you or you either over underthrow the ball. And right now, as we watch the ball go in flight, he's getting it up a little bit too high there. Yeah, it looked like it. He would have, if he could have got his hands on it, would have been in bounds, but it was a bit high. And now New Mexico trying to add to its lead. 21-14. Lobo coaches were calling for one more score before half, and the Lobos are going to get that opportunity right here. Moore is the tailback. Basket in motion. McCamey down the sidelines. One on one, deep ball and overthrow. Wow, that, that came close to being a little interference. It looked like there was contact on that play, Mike. A little bit of contact. Anthony Carter was going for it, and Khalid Nazarud was also over there defending. That looked like contact all the way down. That's one of those tough ones to call. Right. Uh, in part because you don't know the ball may not have been catchable. And plus, you know, you, you don't. Uh, your viewpoint from up here is different than on the field. The contact could have been minimal. It could have been shoulder pass right. hidden. Second down play. Contra Moore was looking over to the left a moment ago. Now he gets the ball on the draw. Up the middle. And just grabbed by the ankles and brought down by Mike Smith. Nice tackle. Mike Smith making a great play on Dontrell after Dontrell was able to get some good yardage. But Mike Smith wrapping up like that. I mean, there's something to be said about wrapping up, Mike. And you see it right there. You, you don't have your legs. You can't go. You can't pump if both of your legs are being held. It's kind of a lost start, isn't it, a little bit? Yes, it is. The guys like to put the big hits on, but they forget about wrapping up. Dontrell now 30 yards on eight carries. Third down and two. Fake the basket. Or try the screen. Moore, if he can turn around, good move there, and he'll get the first down. <laughs> Looked a little slow developing, but Dontrell made that little juke to the right and came back and shook the would-be tackler. Yeah, you know, when he when he's slowing down like that and, and trying to get that shake and bake going, when he has the room to do it, he can really make you miss. And now the clock stopped momentarily at 5.14 to go. Now it's moving. McCamey has seemed to be more relaxed here in the last three or four series. He does. He seems to be coming into his own a little bit there as far as uh, things are probably going better than what he anticipated. A little butterflies to start, I'm sure. More again, short yardage gain. <laughs> Line also seems to be, you know, it's amazing how when one area of the game starts to do better, Somebody else looks better. If the line's doing their job, then McCamey looks better, and Dontrell, and, and all vice versa. And uh, the heat is on to perform on your other teammates. Yes, it is. Performing. More on the sidelines now. Adrian Bird, the fullback, fake to him. McCamey will keep it. Off guard and maybe two yards. We'll see where they spot it. <laughs> Cole, uh, rather, uh, Cole McCamey, seven carries now, over 30 yards, and he's got the two touchdowns. Looks like they don't want to do anything foolish and, and put that ball in, in harm's way. Moore comes back in with the play. Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator, up in the booth near us, or actually below us. Clock moves. 
3.45 and counting left in the first half. Tamia gets rid of it. Good move to Dontrell Moore by Dontrell to get the first down. And you know, uh, the Lobos are giving Tech a little bit of his own medicine. Running back out of the backfield, <laughs> passing plays. I mean, that's Tech, is, we're used to yep. seeing that from Tech. We're yep. used to just seeing more option and stuff like that from the Lobos and not, not a throw to the running back. I know you can throw on the option. You could opt to throw or, or pitch or, or run it, but, but uh, we're starting to see a little bit of that, you know, throwing to the running back. Lobos now four of eight on third downs. So that percentage is now up to 50%. Dontrell with three catches tonight. And with one second left on the play clock, Cole McCain had just saw it and wisely called the timeout. With 3.10 to go, second quarter of play, we'll find out what the coaches decide to do on this first down play when we come back. Welcome back. Glad you're with us tonight. It's not a sellout, but we've got a great crowd on here at hand here at University Stadium as the Lobos try to end a 10-game losing streak against Texas Tech. Back, passing, looking into the end zone, and incomplete. Hank Basket says I was in. I was in. Oh, look, we got to look at the replay. Well, I don't know how he caught that. I don't either. There I'm were three defenders there. I'm just amazed that he caught it. Unbelievable, Mike. Is he turning into a player? Oh, my goodness. This is a guy who didn't play receiver until midway through his senior season in Columbus High School. Look at that. Oh, he's in. He's in. That's two touchdowns now. Let's see it one more time. One more time, and his exactly. shoulder landed well inside. Now, the only thing you can say is, did possession. he bobble the ball? Yeah, possession. That would be the only thing. Did the ball hit the turf? But he caught the ball, but whether he was in or not remains to be seen. As, as we come back to live action, a very nifty run from D.D. Cox. D.D. Cox said, this is my team, man. I run well against these guys. Get me in. I had 187 yards last year. Now what's going on? Well, they're just booing the officials because they could see the replay on the uh, big screen here at the stadium. And, I, I, you know, it's always dangerous to show a replay of a controversial play. Well, these guys have gotten it wrong a couple times. You know, you, 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 they have a hard job. You don't want to get on to these guys. But, you know, let's be honest about it. This has been, this has been wrong. To continue that thought in a moment, on fourth down, up the middle, Cox needs to run hard. And he's not going to get it. He's going to be short on fourth down. And New Mexico will turn the ball over. Fletcher Session was there to turn him away. I don't know, Mike. They might have to measure. Well, they needed to get to the 28. Okay. And, All right. and no, they're saying no. Dede Cox says, what? No measurement? Nothing? And the officials are out there, or rather the local coaches say, wait a minute, are you sure about that spot? Wow, this game is crazy. This is unbelievable. Okay, now, now Lobo, some of the Lobo players are happy. I'm not sure why. Now, what we are getting is that maybe it wasn't fourth down. I thought fourth down came up awfully quick. I did, too. I, that's why I was, when you said fourth and one, I was surprised. I, I, I looked at the far side marker, and it said fourth down. On the board, it said fourth down. And now they're going to come over and talk to somebody upstairs. Wow. And the near side marker has said third down. And Rocky's talking to the to the the man holding the marker over here, and the official. I'm not sure where he went. He, oh, he's over. You see him right there, and I'm sure he's getting a he's load right of here. grief from the fans. Yes, he's on the phone. He's talking upstairs. 
He'll talk to the official score and see if we can get this straightened out. This guy's in over his head, Mike. <laughs> You know, out of fairness to him, it's very hard to officiate a game. But I have never, ever in my life, pro, college, gaffle, anything, Pop Warner, I've never seen a game like this. Well, it, it, you know, keeping track of the downs is is the number one thing you ought to do as an official. And, and you're, you're going to get messed up, but it just adds on to everything we have seen in the first oh half of play. Goodness. I mean, this is, this is like four games rolled into one with all the controversial plays. This should be fourth down coming up. But they, they've counted plays in our, in our truck, and they've said that this should be fourth down to production truck. Now, well now what we're told, there was a pass. Yeah, basket. Basket with a catch. Dontrell. And then two runs. Right. Dontrell, Didi. Dontrell with one and then Didi. No, two with Didi. Two with Didi, okay. So, I, but I don't, you know, this should be a fairly simple thing unless they can't get through on that phone. Now they don't know if the phone is working down. Well, I, if the referee, is he able to talk to the guys on the phone or not? They've been down there for quite some time. Folks, we hope you're having fun at home. We're glad you're with us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the U.S. Open tennis earlier this evening on these stations. KBIM, KREZ, and KRQE. Now they're using a cell phone, Mike. They're using a cell phone? Yeah. There's Scott Dodson. Operations manager using the cell phone now. I guess he got through. He handed it to their game official. Now, what we understand is a pass to Hank Basket and come right. The one in the end zone. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Didi Cox, a nine-yard run. Remember, he was just a yard short. Exactly. Huh? Okay. While we were watching the replay, he had that nine-yard run. And then Cox, the no gain. Well, that might have been Dontrell. Was that Dontrell? No, that was Didi, that was wasn't Didi. it? Yes. That was Didi. Okay. On those two runs, stop short. So those should be the three plays bringing up fourth down. And we're still awaiting word. The crowd is getting restless, Mike. You know this, this guy. You know, Southwest Airlines is gonna. They're gonna call this guy. <laughs> Want to get away after the after the game? They're gonna call this guy, Mike. I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> They're going to get his name and call him. <laughs> wow. Again, folks, it, uh, if you're just joining us, New Mexico leads 21-14 against Texas Tech. But we have had controversial fumble calls. We've had controversial no touchdown calls on right. pass completions. And we've had players thrown out of the game. Gabriel Fulbright was thrown out. To me, very questionable <laughs> as to whether he should, but you know. But and so we, but it has been from the beginning of this game. There's been one thing after another, right. and now is it third down or should it be fourth down? Let's go on the field to Alana Lynn. Alana. All right, Mike. We finally got word uh, they had to use a cell phone, but it is now fourth down. So the referee called up top, and it is now fourth down for the level. After revealing the series with the official score, the play coming up right now is fourth down. Okay. Now, Alana, I don't know if you can still still hear me, Alana, but could you hear at all what the official, the referee, was saying in that phone conversation? Were you close enough to get anything as to what was going on? Of course, I was close enough, Mike. <laughs> he was. Uh, he was just talking about they were going through the downs. First down was an incomplete pass. Just just running through the things with, um, you know, the different plays, the different downs to determine what down it actually was. Did he say anything about I got to get out of here? Is what's the quickest way out of town? Anything like that? You know what? I'll tell you what. His hand was shaking very bad. <laughs> well, it's been a, you know, it's it's a team effort by the officiating crew, and of course it's the referee's job to keep everything together, but. You know, we don't know exactly who's making mistakes down there. My hunch is that the linesman on one side said it was fourth down. The linesman on the other side had it right at third down. All right, it's fourth down, everybody. Fourth and one for New Mexico, and they're going for it. Move 
movement by Tech, no whistle. And now the timeout. Trying to get Texas Tech to jump offside. They did not. The old Dennis Franchoni trick. Yep. New Mexico has taken their last time out of this half. All right, so now they'll talk about it. And this would not be unreasonable for a Rocky Long coach team to go for it anyway. Now, if you can get a cheapie on a on an offside call, go ahead. But if the ball, and, and I do see Wes Sunker coming onto the field, so this would be spotted at about the 36-yard line. And uh, that would make it uh, about a 46-yard kick if, I, if I'm looking at it right. I think you're looking at it right, Mike. All righty. Actually, it's, it'll be, yes, there yeah, we go. You're right. And Zucker is on, all-conference kicker, one for two last week. And now Cole McCamey will spot the ball. The deep snapper is John O'Brien. You can see it's a difficult angle. On its way. No good. Wide left. Wow. Had the distance. Just hooked it a little bit. And so with 1.54 to go, Texas Tech with that high-powered offense will have an opportunity at the 29. I don't know about that one. Well, you know what? If, if, regardless of what they had done, people would say something. Because if they had gone for it and not got the first down, and they would say, why did they Well, do what that? do you say? Well, I'd say this late, you, you, maybe you go for it and try to get the first down and continue to run out the clock, get another shot at the end zone. Sonny Cumbie now has a long way to go with no timeouts. And they'll start things off with the run. Up the middle, and that's Johnny Mack for six or seven yards. That middle is going to be somewhere with the, if they run the ball, they're going to keep going through the middle just because of the formation that the Lobos are using. And for the record, these are Big 12 officials, which is often the case. You get the visiting team's officials on the road. Cumby, short screen. Oh, look at the, the wow. coverage that time. Wonderful job by Mike Mahorek. Mike Mahorek's just bringing it. They having Highland High flashbacks. Coming up and, and, and sticking with his man. And, and Mac is the recipient of a big blow up at the end. That play was not. Well, that wasn't Mahorek. That's 58, not 56. The six and the eight look the same. Michael Kahui. Wake making the great cage uh, play. The defensive end. Third down play. Steps up. And oh, that's going to be very close to the first down marker. Wonderful catch that time by Texas Tech's number 24, Cody Fuller. He got a great spot. That's going to be a first down. Ken West was the defensive back who made the play, and it is a first down. Yeah, they got a, they got a really good spot. All right, at the 40. Cumbie sets up, cross the middle, short pass. That's exactly what New Mexico doesn't want to do. You do not want to miss a tackle. Second catch by Trey Haberty. Finally, Art Haynes brought him down, but the clock continues. Well, it stops momentarily as they move the chains. Now it's going again. Oh, I'm, my mistake. It is uh, not a first down. Pressure coming. Whoa! Again, downfield. Haverty has it inside the 10 with 19 seconds to go. He beat Charles Brown. Spiegel has to get his helmet off the field, Mike. He's hit people so hard he lost his hat on that play. Oh, my goodness. Haverty did not have a catch coming in, and he's got a couple of big ones tonight. No timeouts left, so the Lobos got a hold right here. All right. Just inside the 10. Clock is moving into the end zone. One on one, the coverage is there. Well done by Brandon Payne as he went one on one with Bristol Ulamua. Ulamua, isn't that the guy who uh, went to BYU? Yes. And transferred in after and his two year mission. That's or exactly right. He hasn't played. He that. hasn't played in like four years. Yeah. He's a, a 25, 20. I'm not sure of his age. 
And of course, New Mexico has some uh, uh, players who went on more for Johnson as well. Yeah. Ten seconds left. Here comes the second down play at the eight. Now they go the other way, wide open. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Jarrett Hicks tiptoed on the sidelines to make the catch. Now it was very close. His feet were very close to that sideline, but the official was right there and immediately signaled touchdown. So now this is where the fourth and one comes back up. Do you, do you go for the fourth and one and, and keep the ball and run out the clock? Jarrell Malone was on the coverage there, and Hicks got to him. Flag flies. It'll be offside against New Mexico. The kick is good to tie it up. And now, of course, Texas Tech has an option of declining the point and technically maybe moving it closer and going for two. But Texas Tech apparently says, nope. Defense offside, penalty decline, point is good. And the point is good with five seconds left. Now look at the feet. Just need one in. He got both of them, man. Now the second, the second one on the line. was out, but you can't really tell, can you, from there? Uh, he's down, the first one. <laughs> I, I think that's inconclusive. Maybe, I mean, obviously the official was right there. Down. There it is, you're right, you're right. The right one was down. Yeah. Good call by the officials. I was looking at the left one. I had a question about that, but the right one was in. Yeah, the right one was down. And we're tied at 21 all. And now with five seconds left, Texas Tech will kick off to New Mexico. That scoring drive, seven plays, 71 yards in a minute 49. That just shows you how that offense works, Mike, as far as if you have any time on the clock, that type of offense, you can eat up a good chunk of yardage in just a minute or even under a minute. Squib kick. New Mexico finally picks it up. That's Adrian Brody. And there's one second left on the clock. Or, I'm sorry, Landrick Brody. Got the two fullbacks combine their names. Do you take a knee or do you hit, uh, take a shot at the Oh, I say you throw it. Throw it downfield. This is a crazy enough game where something weird can happen. What do you do? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, this game, you know. It's not easy, is it? It's this not easy just because it's not a normal game. These right. guys have been so horrible, they might jeopardize something, you know, the officials. And they will take an knee. Yeah, that's a safe thing to do. And New Mexico. We'll go into the locker room tied with Texas Tech after that late touchdown by the Red Raiders in a very interesting first half of play. 21-21, Cole McCamey, and, and you can see that the coaches and the officials are not letting the Lobos cross where Texas Tech is going into the locker room. And I think after this half, I think that's a wise decision. I would agree. We don't want any funny business to end the half. I think the players after that one spat had been pretty much well behaved. And there's a look at Coach Rocky Long as he heads into the locker room. And I know what's on his mind. What a brother got to do to get a fair shake around here. And right now, <laughs> I think we want to go down in the field and maybe we can get a thought uh, from Alana, from Coach Rocky Long. Coach. Uh, all right, Coach, it was an intense half. What do you do at halftime? Well, I don't know. We got to see if we there's some things we can do on defense to prevent giving up the ball. Uh, and then we got to hold on the ball on offense and, and make some plays when we got a chance to make plays. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. All right, thank you, Alana. Head coach Rocky Long. You can see by his face what he thought of that first half. Yeah, that 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 was a difficult first half. And you know, since I've been doing this with you, I, I don't say anything on the broadcast about officiating because that's a hard job. But I've never seen like a touch a clear touchdown taken away twice. That's bad, Mike. I mean, and then the, the, the way they, the game has been slowed up by all this indecisive uh, decisiveness, you know, nobody knows what's going on, uh, you know, miss of downs. Uh, what is going on? Where, where, you know, what's going on in this hey, game? Hey, the second half will be better. <laughs> all right. Things will flow smoother in the second half, and we will have that for you right after this. Texas Tech 21, New Mexico 21.
score. We are tied at the half. Texas Tech 21 and New Mexico 21. And let's take a look at some of the first half highlights now. Texas Tech scored three touchdowns, two of them on the ground. And that's surprising, Mike, but what they did was they passed all the way until they got there, and then it, it had at least one through the air. New Mexico getting in on the ground, too. Cole McCamey. This was the very first touchdown of the game. McCamey took it in after a turnover. And then a beautiful pass and catch to Hank Basket right here. And that brought us to 21-21 at the half. Stabs, I, I guess you'd give Texas Tech the edge, uh, but, but fairly even. And then you look at the time of possession, and uh, New Mexico's done a good job hanging in there. And you know, that time of possession is a little deceiving too because Tech has had the ball quite a few times and they get they score quickly. Yes, I mean, they do. Just like the, just the, the touchdown before the half to tie it up at 21. I mean, that, that type of offense, you only need a minute and you can get up and down the field. Well, a lot of weird things happened in the first half of play. If we had an hour, we'd tell you all about it, but hopefully you caught that first half and we'll see what's in store for the second half of tonight's football game where it's tied at 21 all. College football and ready to start the third quarter between New Mexico and Texas Tech. 21-21 the score. Lobos have not beaten Texas Tech in football since 1984. That was here at University Stadium. And New Mexico in position to pull off the victory tonight, although 21-14 would have looked better if they could have held Texas Tech in the final minute and a half of the game, of the first half, rather. Maybe the 28-14, uh, the Hank Basket pass. Looked like a touchdown. All right, well, let's see what kind of second half we can have here. Let's see if everybody's going to bring their A game. <laughs> I and I mean everybody. Yeah, when you said that, I kind of knew what you meant by that. Johnny Mack brings it out, slicing back, and he's brought down. Nice job that time by New Mexico's number 91. And this is Quincy Black, who just came into the program this summer and uh, is just kind of getting used to playing college football here and held the Texas Tech Red Raiders to just a seven-yard return. All right, here we go, everyone. With Texas Tech and New Mexico tied at 21 all. After a wild first half of play, let's see what the second half has in store for us. Hopefully it'll be decided by the players, Mike. You bet. That first half more than two hours long. Sonny Cumby over throws his man, and that hasn't happened very much. He has been extremely sharp. Well, let's once again reintroduce to you the third member of our broadcast team on the sidelines, Alana Land. All right, Mike, I talked to some of the coaches as they were coming back from halftime. They said, you know what, the mood in the locker room, we're fine, we're ready to go, let's get it done. Anybody angry down there about the way the first half went with all the confusion in that? No, you know what, everybody, I mean, nobody really commented on anything, and I don't know if you noticed, but as the Lobos were running off the field, the coaches kind of all made a barrier as so the players didn't go near the officials or the Texas Tech players. So emotions are running pretty high, though, down here. All right, very good. Thank you, Alana. Come beyond the night, 24-38, 264 yards. And that's Henderson on the far sidelines, the second down play. And Nick Spiegel trying to bury that, uh, uh, his tackles from last week where he was officially given three. He is probably pushing in double figures so far tonight. Nick Spiegel all over the field tonight, just running string of play out and trying to keep containment as uh, Henderson was trying to get around the corner there. Good job by Nick Spiegel not to allow Henderson to break one. We do know that guy has some afterburners also. All right, third down play, third and three. Cumbie in the shotgun. Almost going with six defensive backs. Outlet pass, good coverage by New Mexico. And that's key for New Mexico as far as slowing down this Texas Tech offense. Cal Coulter coming from his tackle spot to make that play. Coulter running up and, and, and stopping what could have been another first down for the Red Raiders instead of Red Raiders are three and out the opening series in the second half, Mike. All right, so they've got to punt the ball away. Their first punt was only 32 yards, and now they'll try it again. Alex Reyes 
from Allen, Texas, will attempt to punt one to Dontrell Moore, and Dontrell never even had a chance to return the last one. Good snap. Kick on its way, far side of the field. And for a second time, no chance of a return. So the Lobos, there's a flag, Mike. Well, I was about to say the Lobos will start in good field position. Check might be enjoying the first, first down. Discussion at the 20. Hold against Texas Tech. So Rocky Long may make him kick it over. They, they'd have to move it back to about the 10-yard line. And that was only a 33-yard kick. But if you move it closer to the end zone, I tell you what, it's tough for the punter to boot it from the end zone. Exactly. You get a little bit nervous. And so Especially if there's a rush coming. <laughs> I think these guys just move slow. I mean, you know. Holding on the kicking team, number 58, 10 yards from the previous spot, still fourth down. All right, so they'll move it. It looks like it'll be at the 13-yard line. And so the punter, Reyes, will catch it about three yards deep, and looks like he'll punt it at about uh, well, right in the end zone. Lobos had one blocked last week. Can they return the favor? Nearly blocked, but this is his best punt of the night, and it's going to go over the head of Dontrell Moore. And now he picks it up, stays on his feet, but he'll go down. And that ended up being a not a poor decision, but a tough decision for New Mexico because they lose yardage on the exchange. You know, I think Dontrell had to pick that ball up because I think his hands actually touched that ball, and, and uh, he had to go back and get it then. Probably should have let it bounce. But then again, you know, it's like everything. It was a wild first half, and if you missed it, or if you didn't see it, here's a recap of some of the more bizarre stuff. Fumble here, loose ball, they blew the whistle, and then they gave the ball to Texas Tech. Then there was an ejection there on a play that really didn't look that harmful. Controversial play, looked like Hank Basket caught it for a touchdown. They said he was out of bounds. Now we're back to live action. That's just a sampling of what happened in the first half as Dontrell Moore scurries forward. Then, of course, there was the fourth down play. There wasn't a fourth down play in the confusion and the 10-minute delay as they tried to straighten out. Was it a fourth down or, or was it not? So once again, Mike, never. I, you know, I spoke to a lot of people around. I, I went and got uh, a soda and a, and a couple of drinks for us at the uh, at the break, and I spoke to some of the people downstairs. They've never seen a game like this. They're in agreement. Second down play for New Mexico. Dontrell Moore, a slow night for him. Ten carries, 38 yards. <laughs> He'll go forward, picks up three more. Of course, with Don Trail, he had a 61-yard run last week on his way to uh, 160, what, five yards rushing. And, of course, he can break one at any time. Yeah, he's, he, you know how Don Trail, I mean, the, the more he gets the ball, like, he's, like you said, the, the, when you look at his numbers later, it all add up. He'll have uh, big production. I, I guess they're, they're trying to get him to a certain number of carries so he could have his ticket tonight. The Tech's defensive front is very good, Mike. Third down play. They need a yard, and the ball is batted down. Well done by Texas Tech's Adele Duckett. 6'4", 271 pounds. Looks bigger than that. He's a great from, player. Yeah, from Mineral Wells, Texas. Look at Duckett. Just gets his big mitt up there. Saw Cole getting ready to throw the ball. Did what the defensive lineman should do. The, has, from his defensive end spot, I mean, that guy was, uh, what well, he led the, the Big 12 in sacks last year. I mean, he's no slouch. There's a look at the punt returner for Texas Tech, Danny Amendola. Tyler Goss nearly blocked there. On its way, Amendola at the 10. Slicing through, out to the 20 in the 22-yard line. That was a booming punt from Tyler Goss. 21-21, both teams unable to do anything with the ball. The first time out here in the third quarter. We'll be back with more in a moment.
How about the crowd here tonight? 38,746. That's the third highest in UNM history. Boy, remember the days when if you got 17 or 18, you were lucky, you were happy with that? Yeah. Nice play by Brandon Payne to slide on over to put the hit on the running back for Texas Tech. Looks like the adjustments are working. Uh, we're seeing the defense tighten up on the offenses on both sides of the ball, getting a little bit more difficult to get up and down the field. And now with that said, <laughs> anything can happen just with this play right here. But, but it did look like that. I mean, both teams come out three and out. Got a great look at the crowd here at University Stadium this evening. Couldn't ask for a better night. And that attendance with the State Fair going on, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Across the field, oh, getting three and getting the first down and more is Trey Haverty, who has had three big catches tonight. And Charles Brown, seven on seven there, the numbers of each player. It was Brown getting Haverty down finally. And that goes back to what you call the lost art, Mike. As we look at the replay, Haverty makes a good, strong run. But after this play, right here, Haverty should be down. But Brown is unable to bring him down. He didn't wrap him up, trying to stand up with him and bring him down. You have to wrap up, Mike. All right, first down at the 40. Pressure up the middle, but Gumby's doing well. How about that clear out pattern? And another first down, and Tech loves the block. I'll tell you, there was a great block thrown, uh, thrown that time by Amendola. The catch in the first bound, uh, first down, Joel Falani. I saw, I saw the block thrown and also saw a little extracurricular activity after the play. If you watch here, and watch the block on the side, the left side of your screen. And that is a serious block right there. Somebody see leave Brandon me. Payne, yeah. Brandon playing, playing uh, going airborne on that play. At the 45 in New Mexico territory now. Cumbie changing the play. Barking it out. He's a senior, but he's played very little. Collision is made. Good surge that time by the offensive line for Texas Tech, allowing Henderson really to be unchallenged for five yards. Art Haynes was there to help knock the helmet off of Henderson. Well, the, it's like the whole line swung out with him, so he, he had great protection to get those five yards. Like, like you say, a great surge by the offensive line. Lobo defense getting pushed back a little bit, but once again, they're not putting that many guys up front anyway. Second and five. Two tight ends in for the Red Raiders. Straight drop. Cross the middle. Finds one of those tight ends for the catch and the first down. And it's like Tech has got their rhythm back. Once they get the rhythm, they're very hard to stop, Mike. They're just, they'll just drive down the field, little short passes. Cumbie looking, finding his tight end, dragging across the middle. Nice little pickup for Texas Tech. Mike. First catch of the evening for Clay McGuire. Ten-yard gain. Tech very efficient on this drive. His receiver sidesteps one man, makes the catch, gets the first down. And this time it's the uh, the H-back, Bristol Olamua. BYU transfer. At the 20, make that the 19-yard line of New Mexico. In a lot of ways, this is the best drive we've seen tonight by either team. Yes, consistent, and it's, and it's been on, on their own. He gets rid of it. Another open receiver. Five-yard gain. A couple of Lobos surround him, including Josh Bassnett. Cody Fuller with the catch. Tech now has, Van, six players with at least two receptions tonight. Spreading the wealth. That's the difference between Cumbie and, like, uh, what, what Coach Long said earlier in the week. It's just uh, he knows who to throw it to. I mean, here's a guy who's been sitting back really just studying this offense. This New Mexico defense could use a big play, have not sacked the quarterback tonight. Here's Henderson trying to find the corner, and Black comes over to ride him out of bounds. Good job by, uh, or rather Brown, Charles Brown came over and 
And instead, I had an opportunity to fling him into that sign over there, but wisely held up. Charles Brown just trying to do his part out there, Mike, and, and keeping uh, Henderson from turning that corner because turn, Henderson, if he had turned that corner, that was six. Again, New Mexico going with a lot of inexperience in the secondary anyway, and then you throw in the fact that Gabriel Fulbright was thrown out of this game. Third down and three. Direct snap to Cumby, gets rid of it. First down. They seem to find those holes time and time again, no matter whether it's Cody Fuller here or one of the backs coming out of the backfield like Henderson. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, way that offense is set up. It's so successful because as a quarterback and as the guys running routes, you know where all the, everything is going. Lobos are trying to figure this out as it comes along. And so the defense is at a disadvantage, so to speak, on, especially on short routes like that. Fuller with six catches tonight. Looking to his right, going in the end zone and overthrowing his man. Cumbie had his eyes set on Joel Villani, but that one was uh, clearly overthrown from the get-go. That will bring up second down. Well, Texas, you know, Rocky has a little bit of a theory about Texas Tech. They, they, they start the season very well. Then when they get into the Big 12 season, they kind of come out flat. Obviously, the Big 12, those big, there are great teams there. But the other thing is they don't have the depth. And by the time they get to the meat of their schedule, they're all beat up. They're all beat up. They've got great skill players, but up and down, not quite the depth as some of the other Big 12 schools. Pressure. Oh, it nearly picked off. That would have been a huge break for the Lobos. Good pressure by Mike Mahorek and others. Up the middle, good coverage in the secondary, and now it's a third down play. Texas Tech tonight, 7 of 11 on third down. And that's because, I mean, all they're going to do is just throw a little quick pass. I'm sure this time he's probably going to just look to this corner, the corner somewhere, and lob it up or... 36,000 strong on their feet for New Mexico. Third down and goal at the five. Cumbie looks left, now across the middle, and it's struck. Just out of the outstretched hands that time of the intended receiver, Fuller, who was trying to haul it in. And Fuller running at full speed, and that ball, that ball looked like it had a lot on it. Yes, it did. And I, and I think what happened was, as we look at the replay, Fuller's trying to make the grab on this ball, but that ball zipped through so quickly, he just he just couldn't get it. He may have been going for the receiver at the back of the end zone. Fuller may not have even been the intended receiver there, and one of the coaches talking to him about that, potentially. Alex Trelika on to try to give Tech the lead. On its way. The Red Raiders are in front. So the Red Raiders down 7 0 at one point, 21 14, and now they have taken the lead 24 21. Let's see if the Lobos can answer in a moment. Life by the horn. See your local Dodge dealers now and go Lobos. And every time those Red Raider cheerleaders come out of the field with their flags, local well, fans let them have it with their rain of booze. <laughs> Hard job carrying the flag around. Well, I'll tell you what, things have calmed down here in this football game. Everybody seems to have settled in here in the third quarter after the wild first half. And that's a good thing, Mike. That's a good thing. It was just getting, it was getting very frustrating and and after a while, it's just like the game was out of control. 24-21, Texas Tech in front. Dede Cox is back deep along with Marcus Smith. There's a look at Marcus, who made a big fumble recovery on the special teams earlier in the game. And Marcus will have a chance to catch this, but I don't think he'll bring it out, and he wisely keeps it. And the end stand. Good decision. The suit would have been on him like a cheap suit, Mike. And believe <laughs> right me, I know cheap suits. <laughs> <Listen to you. laughs> 
Some of the other scores tonight uh, you may be interested in. Air Force beat Eastern Washington 42 to 20. It was uh, California 13th ranked over New Mexico State 41 to 14. And let's see, uh, Texas A&M and Dennis Franchoni beat Wyoming 31 to nothing. Those are some of the scores that you may find of interest today. All those games under six hours. <laughs> and New Mexico starts this drive with basically nothing, a short gain by Dontrell Moore, maybe maybe uh, six inches or so. Dontrell just, of course, Dontrell has a little bit of a tendency to look like he's hurt on every play anyway, but yeah. he seems to be moving slow tonight and and just hasn't had an opportunity to, to pull off a big run. Right. I wonder if uh, Didi's going to. And a whistle will stop play here. And New Mexico will take a timeout. That seems like an unusual time to take a timeout, but the Lobos will use their first of the second half, trailing 24-21. Sandia Casino, come celebrate a Lobos victory in style tonight at Sandia Casino. Now we're ready to go. Ball is ready for play. New Mexico down three. Cole McCamey tries to set up, running to his left. Good throw and a great catch. Wonderful catch by Hank Baskin. And you know one thing, man, I think it's a big time concern that you don't have another receiver stepping up. The wide receivers, aside from Hank Basket last week, with just one catch, and I don't know if they have any catches here tonight, but when Hank is playing this well, you try to get it to him. Just a down and out by Hank Basket, going out towards the sideline, making the grab. Nice catch. Basket is the only receiver or tight end to have a catch tonight. There's more. Loses the ball. It's on the turf. On the ground, and Tech has it. Wow. Dontrell Moore had it stripped away, and Texas Tech was able to come up with it. That could be a big turning point right there, Mike. Antonio Huffman. Watch here. Watch the hand come in. And there it is. Yeah. Antonio Huffman, I think, got his hand on it. He, he pulled his arm. In 97, pulled his arm. Still and loose. lost it. Yeah, well, it wasn't Huffman. It was Huffman who recovered it. But somebody put a hand in there. It was it, big number 97. Okay, it was Fred Threat forcing the fumble. And again, that has been a little bit of a pop problem for Dontrell in his career at New Mexico. And you don't want to give Tech an opportunity like this. You can see the game start to slip away. They'll run. Henderson cutting back up the middle. Maybe two. Good job by that Lobo defense there, including number 94, Adam Garday and Mike Mahorek. Lobo defense playing relatively hard. I mean, they've been on the field quite a bit. I mean, in the time of possession, we looked in the first half, it was only a minute's difference, but but they're, they've been playing tough. Well, last week they, they gave up, uh, what, three touchdowns against Washington State, but only one long sustained drive. Right. Tech coming back. That will be a Texas Tech first down. The short pass to Hicks. Jared Hicks with another catch. And those guys, I mean, you got to give it to Tech. I mean, they make it look easy on offense after so many guys just running curl outs and all kind of stuff, button hooks, whatever, getting open. They're just, I just, I just know they're open, finding a way to get open. And it is a first down for Tech. 5:48 to go. Third quarter of play. It was 21 all at the half. This is Tech's third drive. They had a field goal the last time out. And New Mexico has yet to score here in the third period. Sonny Cumbie guns it wide open. Haverty again inside the five yard line. Haverty, Trey Haverty, wide open. And, and New Mexico has forgot about him a couple of times. Trey Haverty is, is earning himself a position 
a nice position on the depth chart, Mike. Having a great game as we watch the replay here. Obviously, something busted coverage somewhere because, like you said, the Lobo did forget about him, but that's an assignment missed. When somebody's that open, somebody missed an assignment, Mike. Well, you could see Ken West leave Haverty and start to go upfield, and I'm not sure why there. He has five receptions, 95 yards. Didn't have any last week. At the five yard line in New Mexico. Anderson maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Well, what a big boost if New Mexico could hold Tech to a field goal here or force a turnover. Paula Fischola at the bottom of that pile. I think he's a great story given a sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA after his knee injury in the second game last year against Texas Tech. He's a tough guy. Look at the passing yards now, Mike. 352, 117. That's where the game is being won, right there. Fans getting into it here. Cumbie, big pressure, and he goes down for the first time. Josh Bazinet came in from the far side and got to Cumbie very quickly, but that's just the first sack of the night. It was a big one. I'm trying to make Sonny look funny. <laughs> That's the game plan tonight. Watch Bazinet just come blow by and come in. And right there, he did the right thing as far as not to make any, you know, extracurricular yeah. activity yeah. afterwards. You can see him hold up his hand. What a wrestler that man was. My goodness. First sack of the night, second of the career of Josh Bassinet. It's a third down play at the 12. Third and goal from there. Come into the end zone. Picked up. He's got room, Mike. Brandon Payne. He's got a convoy. He lost the ball. Is it out of bounds? He's got his ball. Let's wait for the official signal. And yes, it is New Mexico's <laughs> ball. Brandon Payne with his third interception of the season. That's what Brandon Payne, somebody needed to do that for the Lobos. All those passes being thrown around, somebody just needed to make a timing on the ball and, and make a break on the ball to get that interception. That's a big break for the Lobos because Tech's offense was, I mean, they were in rhythm, and they were, they were headed for the, off, the end zone, Mike. Cumbie saw somebody right there. As soon as he let that ball go, Brandon Payne made a good break on that ball, waiting for it. He was patient. Extremely patient, lost the ball there. And obviously, Cumbie just didn't see him. Or he wouldn't have thrown that. I bet he, as soon as he saw it, looked up, I bet he wished he had that one back. 40 yards on the interception return. Cole McCamey, almost sacked, trying to get out of trouble and pick up a yard or two, and he does. Cole's got a little bit of an awkward running style, but he managed to escape there before Brock Stratton tackled him uh, as he approached uh, maybe three, four yard gate. Yeah, he's got an awkward running style. He's pretty fast, Mike. He he, he ran track for Artesia also. And, um, and I remember seeing him run. I, mean, I think he was also on their relay team, and he had some speed. Of course, Artesia, the great 4A football program in New Mexico, went up to Rio Rancho last night and beat the Rams in a very hard fought football game. Yeah, that game was hard fought, 30 to 13. Fake. Now they go with the screen, the far side. That's to Mick. That's to uh, Hank Basket. Nearly lost it at the 40, inside the 40-yard line. Nice gain there of just about 20 yards. Vincent Meeks has had a nice night. He made the tackle. Hank Basket is really turning into a big-time player, Mike. Trying to see if... Uh, I didn't know if we were going to get a replay here. Now, I watched the play develop, but we, I can't see the, what the backers are doing. I think they committed to Cole. No, no, the little screen there. Hank following his blocks, just picking up a nice gainer. I think when, what you saw when you thought he had nearly lost it, I think he was just tucking it in. Maybe. Putting it on the other side there. Just inside the 40-yard line. Here's the option. Hitch to D.D. Cox. And he is stopped. Nice, solid hit by Khalid Nazarudin with the stop there. And I thought for a moment there we were going to see another Chris Williams play from last night. Uh, Didi, his knee hadn't hit the ground yet or his elbow, and he right. was laying on the player, roll off of him in the run. Referring to a play in the Rio Rancho high school game last yes. night. 
As for Hank Basket, six catches, 99 yards. He's about to go over the 100-yard mark for the second straight game. Cox with a gain of four. They'll get another opportunity here. Boy, not quite a yard gain on that play. Nothing there, Mike. So third down and long five coming up. New Mexico trails it by three. A little momentum, though, after the interception returned by Brandon Payne. Takes defensive front. They're not easy to push around like that. I mean, those guys, they've done well against the run. Like even you were mentioning when they get in the conference, they're beat up. But their, their front has done pretty well against the run this year. Last year, they had trouble against it. Third down play. Shotgun. Cole McCamey has a seam. Decided to pass it. Complete. First down, New Mexico Lobos move those chains. And Dontrell Moore comes out of the backfield to make the catch, and that's his fourth reception of the evening. Dontrell looking for redemption, and you know he feels bad when he fumbles. And watch Dontrell. It's another one of those plays where he just runs out, actually runs a curl out just like he's a receiver. Dontrell taking off and bringing the ball in and helping the Lobos get that first down. I'm sure that does something for him after the fumble earlier. Ball spotted the 28-yard line. Paul McCamey has really done a rock-solid job tonight. Hand off to Moore. Makes one man miss. Hangs on to the ball. Picks up four or five. Brought down from behind Duckett and Meeks tag team for the tackle. Now you know what we were talking about him getting stronger as the game. It looks like he's trying to pick up a little bit of a rhythm there, Dontrell is. Because this time he made a guy miss, and he actually got some yards behind it. I mean, he made a couple of guys miss earlier in the game, and the next, the second guy was there to make the stop. Dontrell Moore leaves the field 51 yards tonight. He is now the all-time leading rusher in Mountain West Conference history, passing Larry Nett of San Diego State. Of course, the league is uh, still an infant, but... That's quite an accomplishment for the junior from Roswell. McCamey with the pitch. Good hands by D.B. Cox. Does a little juking just to get back to the line of scrimmage, but uh, Vincent Meeks did a nice job, number one, to bring him down. And that, that D.D. Cox had a lot of success against that Texas Tech defense last year. Like I said, Texas Tech struggled against the run last year, so that might be a little deceiving. A lot of those guys were young, as, you know, redshirt freshmen and sophomores last year. And uh, they were thrown into the fire. I mean, New Mexico being one of their first games. All right, let's see what Dan Dodd has in store here. Third down and a long five. They need to get to about the 18. Basket in motion. Fake to him. The pitch. Dontrell Moore. Tech has that one snuffed out. Nothing doing there that time. Adele Duckett was the first player. And and now Dontrell is no longer the leading rusher in Mountain West Conference history <laughs> after that loss. That'll bring up a fourth down play. And we will pick it up when we come back for the fourth quarter. 15 minutes of regulation left with Texas Tech leading New Mexico 24-21. UNM Lobo football is brought to you in part tonight by your Albuquerque Toyota dealers. And now Wes Zunker is on to try to tie this football game up. First play of the fourth quarter. Cole McCamey looks like he'll spot it right at about the 35-yard line, which would make it a 45-yard attempt. Zunker missed earlier from about 46 yards, hooked it wide left. There is a wind down there. It's been a nice night, but maybe directly into the wind, but let's check it out. McCamey okay, puts it down, the kick on its way. It's gonna be close, and it's good. It looked like it was going to slice to the left, but it came back to the right, and New Mexico ties it up on the field goal by Wes Sunker. Boy, did that kick ever look like it was going to go to the left? You're right about that, Mike. I, when, I, I, matter of fact, I wasn't even sure that it was it was good until the officials raised their arms. Well, the young man from New Braunfels, Texas, ties this football game up, 24 apiece.
All right, Wes Zucker has tied this football game up, and this game is brought to you in part by the New Mexico Lottery. So far, the New Mexico Lottery has raised nearly $220 million for lottery success scholarships for students throughout New Mexico. The New Mexico Lottery benefiting New Mexico's future today. Terrific look at that behemoth for New Mexico. Adam Garday, 6'2", 253-pound lineman, actually rather light for a defensive lineman <laughs> yes, these days. Yes. But New Mexico just uh, is not particularly deep at that spot this year, but I think the defense has done a real good job in this football game to give the offense a chance to win. All right, well, they're relying on speed, and, and speed can really help you in a game of ventures, right? Brian Bishop, Johnny Mack back deep. It'll be Mack at the center. Out past the 30-yard line. Mack had a head of steam. And that probably looked scary for a little while to some of the fans. Jarrell Malone in there. You see Nick Spiegel again. And now, 24-24 after the 24-yard return. That's the number of choice right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very impressed with Sonny Cumbie. Yeah, the he's guy has done a terrific job. He's the real deal, Mike. Snyder, Texas, senior, 6'4", 222 pounds. Now the Lobos go with three down linemen. Time. Really picked off. And now a late flag. What is that all about? Perhaps a hold. You can see that Hicks was applauding there. And now the little smile. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, it's obviously a hold. Pass interference. Number 56 of the defense. Spot foul. First down. Mahorik with it. Keep an eye on number 56. The timing is not particularly good on that. Number 11, the attendant receiver, number 56. Oh, I don't know. I like One more time. There's it. definitely collision there. Now, I don't know whether he could have caught the ball, but he, Mahorik did wipe him out. And that is uh, Brandon Douglas, who has played very little tonight. And I'm not sure what this uh, little session is all about. I'm Tom Allers, I, I think he might want somebody to get off the sidelines, but I'm not sure. I'm convinced that guy just wants attention to himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's stolen the show for sure. First and 10 at the 33. Time now, thrown away. Good pressure, you get a little pressure there. And obviously it makes things a lot more difficult. Just one sack tonight, but the pressure has been much better in the second half. Pressure has been much better, and you, you start hurrying some of those passes, and you don't want to get in a, a dangerous situation where you underthrow your receiver. So Sonny Comby doing the other, the best thing as far as if he's trying to get it to him, it's better to probably sail a little high, throw it a little high, than to underthrow him, because that's when you risk getting it picked off. 33 of 53 tonight, 352 yards and a touchdown. The numbers for Cumby. Correct snap. Gets rid of it. Good luck to Hicks. Hit hard, first down, spins away. Loose football, Mike. Are they going to call it down? It should be down, I believe. And, and now the officials will come in and say, yes, the ball is down. Let's see if the ball is down. <laughs> Looks like that might be another one. Let's see. The back judge came in. Now, I thought he was down, and I looked away, and then there was all the fuss, but let's see. Okay, Hicks makes the grab. What a move. There he is. That's a great move. Yeah, he was down. Another angle at it now. Did he lose control of it? Right up there, we're going to be able to see for sure, I think, right here. Oh, wow. He lost control of it. Yeah. Another bad call. That's the third fumble that's been given back. Now the pass trying to set up the screen to Henderson. Has some room. And the little guy races to the far sideline before he's pushed out of bounds. And Michael DeHuey with the tackle there had a good game tonight. 
You know, that last one in, in, in the defense of the officials, I'm not so sure if that uh, the ball was starting to come out, then he hit the ground, and then it came out. Well, let's so check I'm not it out. Sure. Let's see. Let's see what happens. The ball, okay. Let's see. He's got possession. He's losing possession right there. Knee he's is still, not down yet. But he still has it there, and then it comes out as he's down. So I, I don't have any problem with that one. We'll agree to disagree there. 13.50 to go. Second down play. We are tied at 24 off. Cross the middle, short of the first down. Good coverage by New Mexico as Olamua is brought down after the game. It was the game. Ken West was on the coverage, and that'll bring up a third down and one. Olamua is a load, isn't he? He most certainly is. That's, you know, when you when you see third and one with Tech, or fourth and one for that matter, it's just you just think they're going to get it because their offense has been so efficient. Well, if he wanted to sneak it, he probably could. Quick pass, Haverty with it, and that'll be a first down, a gain of about one. And it, it's it's so difficult to cover because if you come up in a situation like that and maybe get uh, you know right up to the yard line where Haverty is, he puts a little move on you. He's Everybody gone. reads it and he's gone. Yeah. And a lot of these guys, you know, they have a linebacker on it or or somebody like Bassinet who's a safety and maybe doesn't match up very well with some of this guy, these guys. So it's a difficult, difficult offense to defend against. Yeah, plus you don't want to come up too soon and, and get beat deep. Cumbie sets up a screen in the middle. Flag flies, there's going to be a hole and this one's coming back. And it looks like the center is standing about the 50 yard line. He knows it. And he, he, <laughs> he held up his arms like, who, me? It's like my bad. <laughs> and so this one will come back. But getting back to something Rocky Long said that why Tech has some trouble in the Big 12, he says the Big 12 defensive backs and the linebackers are as fast as their receivers. And you just don't have that out of New Mexico in most right. cases. Holding 75 of the offense, 10 yards in the previous spot, remains first down. E.J. Whitley, the guilty party there. And we might be able to see it. He, he's, he's the left tackle to the right. Of the EJ, the doesn't, of the he doesn't EJ doesn't believe it. There he is. EJ's got yeah, his mitts out. There's a hold. And that was a situation where you really didn't need to hold. No. Nine penalties tonight for Texas Tech. 95 yards. First down and 20. Time all well, day. Time he's got. Now Cumbie flushed out and he throws to the safety valve, Henderson. Clock keeps moving. We approach 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. See, that's another good thing about that offense, Mike. I mean, there's a guy that stays home to block, one of the running backs helping out for the pass protection. Then he just takes off, runs, sits in the, sits right there at the end of the, the uh, he runs a little four yard curl out and just sits right there waiting for the ball. Make an initial block and then and then go. And then go. Gain of seven, second and 13. Tech has five receivers with at least six catches. Pressure coming. Shovel pass to Henderson. Lobo defense breaks down nicely to make the tackle. A couple of the safeties there. And there's uh, Fosh Fashola, or, or rather, uh, uh, Fala Fashola. Getting somebody's and getting up slow. slow coming up. Yeah, Fala Fashola. Tough name, isn't it? Fashola, yeah. It looks he's like he's up. okay. Yeah. He's, he's another one of these Texas kids, Marshall, Texas. Got a little stinger there. He's limping a little bit. Yeah. We hope he's all right. Third down and four. Nobody's left here tonight. 38,000 and plus. He's changing the play. Alana told us earlier it's extremely hard to hear down there. They'll try to run for it. Henderson. It's going to be close. And he's going to be a little bit shy. Oh, they're going to go for it. I would think so. Henderson on the little bit of a delay, and Alana Lynn is on the sidelines. Pretty loud down there, Alana. 
All right, well, Fristola is just sitting down here. He's trying to test his right ankle, it looks like, trying to walk it off. He's up and moving now, so it looks like he kind of just tweaked it a little bit, but not too concerned about it because he's getting ready to get back out there. All right, fourth down play. This is going to be very close. Extremely close. The quarterback sneak by Cumby. And boy, That's no guess from me. No. I'm going to say he got it. All right. I'll be the contrary person that I am. I'm I'll say water he's, on myself. He's, <laughs> he's going to be short by about two inches. Okay, we'll see. All right. They'll bring the chains from the far sideline now. You can see the ball is spotted smack dab in the middle of the 30. Oh, got it by two inches. Told you. An unpopular decision here. One of many. You can hear one fan from right below it say that was a horrible mark. And <laughs> one disgruntled fan who sounds like hey, they might want to keep him watching that guy. <laughs> so he's going to have a sore throat tomorrow. That was pretty loud. At the 30 yard line. Under 10 minutes to go. Fourth quarter. We're tied at 24 off. Mike Powers, Van Tate, Alana Lynn with you tonight. <laughs> Cumby stays in. Haverty with another catch. Trey Haverty brought down by Charles Brown. And they like going in the middle. You know, they, they, they're finding the middle to be soft because they're going, they're going there plenty of time right over the top right there. Haverty comes in, cuts in, running that inside, down and in, you know. Second down play, gain of just four. Seven catches, 101 yards now for Trey Haverty. New Mexico forced a turnover, a key turnover in the third quarter. Now the pitch. Here's Johnny Mack, broke down from behind. And that's Nick Spiegel who's having a whale of a football game. You know, that was almost a very dangerous pitch to, to make. I mean, that was a dangerous play as, as we watch the replay here. Nick Spiegel coming up, and he's not fooled at all. That pitch, I mean, Spiegel was almost there to take the pitch. Mack really had, didn't have a chance on that play. Looks like Nick could be a pretty good bulldogger. I wonder if he's thought of getting on that rodeo circuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. The NFL doesn't work out. <laughs> oh, man. A little confusion in the backfield for Texas Tech on third down and eight. Quick release. Flags fly. We might have offsides. It's going to be game. short of the first down, but perhaps the Lobos jump. And let's see what the call is. The officials have had more huddles tonight than Texas Tech. Yeah, I believe Fashola for, for jumped a little bit. Yeah. And there you go. Rocky Long flabbergasted. And I hope you're Offside. not getting reading lips. On the defense, five yards in the previous spot, still third down. Rocky working the officials. I think he felt like his players were drawn offsides. And now he gets back into his coaching mode. It's a third down play, third and three at the 23. No flags this time. Incomplete pass. That was a good stain right there by Payne. Payne just coming up, putting some contact on Douglas like He got him in his gluteus maximus, which would make you drop the ball. <laughs> well, the pass was a little bit off that time. And yeah, watch, watch the receiver have to kind of double back, contort himself a little bit. Yeah, he sure did have to contort himself just a bit. He almost made that catch as far as, uh, you know, he was he was in the vicinity to make it. I mean, he's those, those guys. They're very focused out there. The tech receivers are good. Like, they always are. Alex Trelika from 40 yards out. 
to put the Red Raiders ahead. On its way. No good. Wide right. Wide right from 40 yards out. And now New Mexico will have a chance to take the lead with 7.45 to go. We'll be right back to see if they can do it. There's a look at the press box at University Stadium, as well as some of the uh, Zia suites and and the luxury boxes as well. And 38,000 fans have shown up tonight. The third biggest crowd in UNM history. Lobos open the season with two home games and go on the road next week to Oregon State. And that's a game we'll have for you. Tape delayed next week at 5 o'clock because of the Pac-10 window. They will not let us telecast that game live, but we'll have it for you at 5 o'clock. 24, 24, 7.45 to go, fourth quarter. Hank Basket, a big game tonight. Oh, big time hit. Going nowhere. Stontrell Moore, last two carries. He's gone backwards. Adele Duckett, one of the players in on the tackle. Well, the middle of that line, I mean, Stontrell going up the middle, I mean, there was absolutely nothing there. Lobo offensive lineman did not get any kind of surge on that play right there. The Texas Tech front met Dontrell before he even got a chance to get up to the line of scrimmage. Claude Darrell, Robert Turner, Ryan Cook, Fred Tucker, Terrence Pennington. The right side is the, is the new look side for New Mexico. Second down and 11. McCain with the fake. Downfield. Basket. First down. It's not basket by Gully. I guess I assumed, and that's, that's Marcus Smith with the catch. The first receiver other than Dontrell Moore and Hank Basket to make a catch tonight. Well done. Let's go on the field now. Well, before we do that, let's take a look at this replay as we see Smith go to the sideline. Marcus Smith finally getting his chance to get a, be a part of the Lobo offense. First time the ball was thrown to him, really, in this game. Just, I think the Tech defenders just left him open because they didn't, they, everybody's worried about Hank. They said, who is this guy? First down. Setting up the screen, McKamey unloads it. Throws it away. No flag. And now let's go down to a lot of lane. All right, Mike, when the defense came off the field, the coaches went up to him and said, let's take this personal, let's get the job done, let's play some of your best football. Then Josh Grassinet uh, crowded around the team and said, it's up to us, let's get this done. And they'll have an opportunity. Depends on whether New Mexico will have the lead at that point or we're still in a tie game. McCamey, your impressions of Cole tonight, 11 of, of 20, 159 yards. I think Cole has been solid. I mean, for this to be his second game as a starter, I think he's, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. And I mean, they're not playing slouch teams either. McCamey on the keeper, bounces outside, gets about four before he's brought down by Vincent Meeks. That was about this time against Washington State where he fell apart a little bit last week. And again, it's a maturation process here right. with, with a quarterback. Physically, he's got the tools. And you know, you, you say he fell apart, and, and that's, you know, the maturation process, that did show his age. I mean, because here's a guy who wanted to win so bad, he's on national TV, he's playing a big school like Washington State. The mistakes to start coming because he tried to force it. Third down, six yards to go. New Mexico needs to keep the ball. And they won't do it. A little bit short on the pass across the middle to Basket. Basket was open. The pass just wasn't there. Cole got, well, Cole got hit as he threw the ball. That, I think that took a little bit off yep. of that ball. And so it, it was ended up being underthrown. Hank trying to do his best to salvage that throw, and it almost came away with a great reception, Mike. It might have been catchable, but that's if that's a mistake, it's the only one Hank's made in two games.
Danny Amendola is back deep to receive this punt on its way. It's not that deep, but it's very, very high. And it's going to take a good bounce. Will it stop? New Mexico stops it at the three-yard line. Super effort going down the field. And that may have been John O'Brien, the long snapper, down there first. Look at him. He's just shaking his head like, yeah, that was me. Let's take a look here. The ball hits at about the 18. That ball almost hit the Texas Tech player, number three. Well done. Stopped inside the five-yard line with 5.35 to go. Glad you're with us up late tonight. We're tied at 24. Welcome back. Tech with the ball at the two. Cumbie changing the play. They'll try to pass out of there downfield. And a little bit too much. This is a dangerous spot for this offense. It is because they just don't run it out very well. They don't have a fullback to give you three or four yards and a little cushion. You know, one mistake by throwing that ball in the middle can lead to six the other way. Humby now 40 of 61, 399 yards. It's also dangerous for the local defense, too, because one mistake could end up breaking for the other Yes, the other it way. is. You don't want to play soft here, but you have to be careful. They'll try to pass again. A little bit short. Humby hasn't been quite as sharp here. I think the pressure is starting to get to him a little, just a little bit. Now, I might be wrong, but I mean, in a sense, this is a rookie for him. He's a rookie, too, you know, because he didn't play. He just watched. He, he played behind some good quarterbacks, and he just watched. He just got plugged into the system. He hasn't been in a situation like this. Timeout on the field. Tech wants to talk things over. Yeah, Actually, there's an injury timeout. And we don't have a number just yet. One of the down linemen. And that's Dylan Gandy. 6'3", 300-pound senior. He's the center. And judging by what they're doing, looks like he's got a cramp. It's been a beautiful day, but it's been hot. And if you don't stay hydrated, you're going to have problems like that. It looks like he's going to be OK. And he'll stay in the game. Unless they have to make, they'll make him go off for the play because of the injury. Yeah, he wants to stay in, but they're going to make him come out. There's too much, there's too much uh, at stake here. And, and sometimes when you get a cramp or whatever, and you're thinking about that, you can make a mistake with that football. He's got to make the snap. So it's best for him to come out if you're Texas Tech. What a second half after that wild first half. Six touchdowns in the first half, two field goals here in the second half. The defenses have done a great job. Can the Lobos hold here? Third down and 10. Cumbie. Bassinet pressuring him, wide open, first down, Texas Tech. Somehow, Hicks got wide, wide open. Somehow is a, a missed assignment, Mike. I mean, when you have guys that open, somebody missed, missed an assignment. Jarrell Malone was over there, and again, he was the closest Lobo, but you don't know if it's his fault. Well, let's, let's try to see what happens. I don't think they look, look. He lost track of him. He lost track of him because he broke it out to the outside instead of going in. And I don't even think if I don't think Malone knew that he had broken it to the outside. First down play, big hit for the Red Raiders. Pressure. Haggerty again. Bassinet gets away from him. And Bassinet will get the tackle, his 14th of the night, but not before the big gain of 17 yards out to the 37. And there's a Lobo down. Look at the effort coming up by Haverty with that crossing pattern. Again, number seven. Not the first choice, second or the third choice. Haverty just, and, and, and you know, the one thing that's been with Haverty, he's been good after the catch. 
He's, right, he has been. He's been good after the catch. He's not just making a catch and going down immediately when there's contact. He's making the Lobo defenders work, grab him up, and bring him down. That injured player for New Mexico was Charles Brown. Went to the sidelines now. Looks like he hurt his shoulder. You can see him coming in late on that play, hitting his helmet and perhaps his shoulder uh, on Haverty as he went down, and that may have caused the injury. 4.35 left in the fourth quarter. Tie game. Harvey hands it off to Henderson. And who's there to make the tackle? Yes. Marcus Parker. Marcus Parker. I was working with uh, Chris Brown, uh, who, Charlie Brown, who just went out. Uh, he's, he's getting his hand worked on, Mike. So maybe he did something. He's coming back. Trying to yell to somebody. Oh, right now he's going back, back. But it looks like he'll be ready to play. But it looks like he's holding either the, the left side. But anyway, good job by Parker. Parker's just able to knife through. You know, Tech, they have these gaps in their line. Usually they're a lot wider than that. But since they play a New Mexico, a blitzing team, they, they bring their gaps in a little bit closer. And, and Parker finally gets through one of those gaps tonight. Second down and 12. Cumbie. Time, time, time. Complete. Good coverage out of the backfield by Nick Spiegel, who was uh, staying stride for stride with Henderson. Great coverage by the local secondary. Just you see, uh, late in the game like this, a guy like Compey, he's not going to. Uh, I don't think he's going to try to force anything because he's seen veterans play ahead of him, and he's a senior, upper class guy. So I mean, he's a, he's a senior. He, he's got that on the as far as being mature. He's got that. So I don't think he's going to do that. New Mexico has not beaten Texas Tech since 1984. They've lost 10 in a row to the Red Raiders. Third down. From behind. The pass caught. What a beautiful play, although it's going to be shy of the first down marker. Beautiful stretch out and catch by Jared Hicks out of Houston. And he's a little bit disappointed here because he thought he had enough. They'll be a yard and a half shy. All right, Mike Leach. They're gonna You're go the coach. It. What are you going to do? With three minutes and five seconds to go. Look how close Cumbie came to being sacked on this play. As you, you, well, you can't see him now. But the local coverage was pretty good. He just said the, the ball was going well. And Hicks just made the play. Cumbie. Oh, I think he got it. He did. He got it. New Mexico's defense wasn't ready for that quarterback sneak. They got up there too late. And Tech converts the fourth down play for the second time tonight. This is like their longest drive. I mean, usually they get down and get in quick. But they're eating a lot of clock time, Mike. They just need a field goal. Tralika missed the last time out from 40 yards. This New Mexico defense needs to hold them right now without a first down. Back to pass, cross the middle. Flag flies, we may have a face mask. I think you're right. We may have a face mask, and that will put Tech almost into field goal range. Yeah, face mask. My goodness. And New Mexico is getting to the point now where Tech may have an opportunity to kick that game-winning field goal, potential field goal, with no time left. Mask on number 16 of the defense, five yards, first down. Well, it's a five-yard penalty, which is, which is better. And there's the face mask right there. Yeah, it could have been a 15-yarder. I'm gone a long time. West is trying to get him down. At the 42. In the pocket, getting rid of it. Not that time. Cumbie took a big shot right there on that play. I mean, he got hit. He, he was drilled, and he gets back up, and he's fine. But he took, he paid for that play. I believe that was Mike Mahorek. 
dropping in on company like that. Look at that, 449 yards. 44 for 67. Well, his attempts have been more than SMU. <laughs> he had 60 attempts against SMU, 470 yards. More attempts and less yards here, but that's still a big stat. Second down play. Clock stops with 2.03 to go, fourth quarter. Tumby wants to change things up. Now some confusion, and Tech will take a timeout. Yeah, they had to because the game clock had, the, the, uh, clock had wound down to two seconds. 24-24, we'll take a timeout as both teams talk it over. Here we go. Second down and 10 for Texas Tech. We're tied at 24 all. Two minutes, three seconds to go, fourth quarter. Field goal might win this for Texas Tech. Gumby steps up, downfield. Overthrows his man. That time he was looking for one of his favorite targets, Cody Fuller. Fuller's only six feet, 199 pounds. Now it's third down. Can this Lobo defense stop Texas Tech? Texas Tech is not in field goal range yet. Well, if they get in field goal range, their kicker, remember, is a freshman. So that should be a lot of big time pressure on a freshman who's never been in this situation in a D1 college football game. And we'll see how he deals with that. Third down and 10, probably two down territory for the Red Raiders. Lobos jump off sides. They better keep playing. Now the Lobos say they were forced off and it looked like it was Marcus Parker who jumped. And let's see if they can get this right now. Cody <laughs> Campbell, the left guard, may have been the guilty party. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 16 of the offense. Five yards, remains third down. They'll say it was Daniel Loper, the left tackle. Daniel That's Loper. That's a big play. That is a big play. Now you can see the movement. There it is right there. He raised up. Now Lobos may have gotten a break because Parker started to go across that neutral zone. Yeah, he, he got back though. He backed up. Third and 15. Pressure up the middle, incomplete. Marcus Parker came barreling through the middle. Now I'm gonna test my memory, folks, and you don't like to bring up bad things if you're a Lobo fan, but there was one game against Texas Tech where it was fourth and like 35, and Texas Tech completed it and went on to win in the final seconds back in the, the mid-80s. But this time, we're not going to see that type of situation because the defense held, and Tech has decided to punt the ball away. I, I think this is a fake punt. Fake punt on fourth down and 15? Yeah, yeah, let's see. New Mexico has no one back with a minute 55 left. Punt is good, on its way. The Lobos would love to see this get in the end zone, and it does. And so New Mexico has 80 yards to go with a minute 47 left. And we have had a most entertaining game, a two tale of two halves, <laughs> all the wild stuff that went on in the first oh, yeah. half, and then a very and traditional, conservative second half, and well played second half, but not a lot of points. Yeah, well played, not a lot of points, but we took the other element out of that game as far as the first half was so confusing with all the, the weird things going on with the officials and all that. I mean, it just made it made it just very, it was just a strange first half. And the second half has been nice because it's been a defensive battle. Some of the drives have been, you know, the one team would get something going, the other team would get something going only to be stopped. So it's been a great second half. Time out on the field right now. There's an injured Texas Tech player. I believe it's Trey Haverty who was the 
Texas Tech player who raced down to try to down the ball, but he was pushed as it got close to it, and, uh, and it looks like he's going to be okay right there. And you can watch the Lobo uh, player right there give him a shove, and probably not a legal play, but no, no call there. And I think Haverty is okay. I think he twisted his knee, Mike. Oh, no, it looks, it looks like maybe he's got some kind of tightness down there right. in his calf. Right, right. Yeah. Well, he'll get it off the field here in a moment and maybe uh, cramping up a little bit, and he'll be back if Texas Tech gets another opportunity with the ball. New Mexico needs to go 80 yards. They need to take care of the ball, but they need to get it down so that Wes Zunker will have an opportunity to kick the field goal. And I'm sure Zunker's thinking about that right now. He better be. The crowd seems to be wondering what's going on also, but they see Haverty leaving the field now. We went off slowly. That guy's a good player. Good yeah, it's like they've, they've kept him a secret for four years, and now they decided to unveil him for New Mexico. Well, you know, I think the bar is so high as far as re their, their receiving core at Texas Tech. I think the bar is so high that these guys just come into the system, and they're, they're good because they've been waiting for their chance, and all the other guys ahead of them are good. Haverty is technically an H-back, but all that means is he starts in the backfield and then yeah. goes out to catch the ball. First down to Mexico at the 20. Long way to go. We're tied at 24. Now they'll try the option. Some room for Cole McKamey. And he'll get out of bounds. First down. McKamey may end up being the leading rusher in this game tonight for New Mexico when it's all said and done. It looks like it. And they are saying it's a first down. Yeah, that was he looking ahead with Zunker his career long is 51 yards against UTEP back in the 01 he's an attempt he's attempted a field goal from 54 yards out that's his longest attempt at the 30 try the option again good catch by Moore cutting back and he'll pick up eight or nine Yeah, Dontrell knows how what's, what's on the line here. And he, he made the grab this time. It, you know, that one pitch that he missed, it seemed like he was a little tentative about it. Yeah. Maybe even a little nervous. And, and uh, that was a great catch by him, though. Well, now, watch the replay. Ball's pitched kind of high, and he, he grabbed it. And I mean, it's not like right in the numbers, but I guess sometimes that's where you want it because it can bounce off your equipment, too. Clock continued to move. Lobo's taking a lot of time getting this play off, much longer than they needed. Second down, McCamey looking downfield, looking for his man, and goes right between the hands of Marcus Smith. He made the move to come back, but he did not make the play. Antonio Huffman was there on the coverage. You know, I wonder if Marcus Smith was wondering if he was out of bounds when he turned around. It looked like maybe he had thought about it because he made the adjustment. But he, he looked back, took a glance real quick, and then we can see if we can see that. If he's wondering where he's at, he just he just got away. He just moved his body out from the ball, probably trying to keep a deflection off of the shoulder pads. Looked very awkward there, and it went right through the wicket. Sure did. It's a third down play with 54 seconds to go. Be smart here. Take care of the football. Hand off to Moore. And spinning. Getting the first down. Staying on his feet, just shy of the 50-yard line. It's late in the game. Dontrell has more carries. He's starting to run hard, Mike. That was that was extra effort on his part. He was really stopped. If you look at this play, it looked like Dontrell was going to be a little bit stopped, a little bit of the first down. But the spinning move right there got him down to the first down. I'll tell you what, I love the block. You can see number 62 right there, Fred Tucker. But there was also another block. There's the uh, Ryan Cook. The, the center doing a great job, and also the tight end, Curtis Pino, the young man from St. Pius who comes down on two tight end situations, made a great block downfield. Timeout on the field now. The numbers for Dontrell Moore. 18 carries for 55 yards. That's gonna be updated here in a moment. He's now the uh, Mountain West 
leading rusher for now. Eight. Yes, well, he's he now has 65 yards, so I don't think he's going to lose that title. Don Trout, in his career, has 14 100-yard games. He's approaching the record of 16, set by Winslow Oliver. And what a fine running back Winslow Oliver was. Boy, was he ever. Need about 15 more yards, Mike, to get in range for uh, Zonker. His, his longest is about 51 yards, so. There was a timeout charged to New Mexico. They have one left. It's a first down, 48 seconds to go. Ball at the 49. Just shy of the 50. Cole McCamey getting a little hair on his chest. Running the show for New Mexico. Lots of time now. Looking for the tight end downfield, and he's just going to throw this one away. Great pass protection for Cole McCamey. That pocket started to break down on him, and you can see his speed. That's one thing that's keeping Cole from getting sacked is that because of his speed, he's able to run and make something out of nothing, in this case, making a wise choice and throwing the ball out of bounds so that you don't lose yardage and you're taken even further back as trying to get into field goal range. Well, to be safe, let's see. Need to get down probably inside the 35-yard line. Probably closer to the 30 to give Wes Zunker a realistic shot at it. He's made one from 44. He also missed one. Tech. Dontrell Moore up the middle. Inside the 40-yard line. Clock will stop as they move the chains. New Mexico needs to hustle up. Lots of time. You might consider spiking the ball here. Now the clock moves, and they'll spike it. Just, just what you call. That's Cold what hours. I would have done. You bet. <laughs> and now New Mexico will regroup. There's a look at Wes on the sidelines. New Braunfels, Texas, I believe, is fairly close to Lubbock. I don't know my Texas geography as well as I should. You know, I don't... I'm not sure. I don't think that. I don't think it is. No. All right. Yeah, New Brownsville. I don't. I know. Of course, everywhere in Texas, you're a long ways from someplace, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's so many cities around there. You. It's close to Brownville. Oh, is Love it? Oh, Minnesota. Yeah. I don't know. I think 30, that's what you're thinking of. I don't know what I'm thinking. 32 seconds left. Basket in motion. Fake to Moore. Downfield open. Smith hangs onto the ball at the 25. <laughs> Marcus Smith holds that one in. The Lobos are finding out they have a second receiver in Marcus Smith. Two big catches for Marcus Smith to keep drives alive. I'd spike this one, too. All right, Coach Stars, we'll see. Clock moving, 24-23. <laughs> well, that's the easiest call I've made all night. Two for two. Mike's getting a big hit right now as we get ready to look at the replay with Marcus Smith. Smith running himself a nice little route there. Got his man. His man didn't want to commit too much to get up too close to him. I, I think, once again, the Tech defenders are playing off of him just a little bit because Smith doesn't command the same respect as a Hank Basket right now, and that's been to the Lobos' advantage. The Lobos now at the 25-yard line. Of course, do they go? Do they try to get closer for the field goal, or do they try to go for the outright win with 23 seconds left? Four wide receivers in. They'll give it to Moore. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, does not. And now New Mexico probably will use a timeout. Still moving the clock, 13. And now it stops. Boy, is this a dangerous situation. 12 seconds to go, out of timeouts. New Mexico is out of timeouts. Now, I don't know why they restarted the clock. It was at 12, and then a second just went off now another couple of seconds so are they aware of that well i think rocky is if you can see the look on his face and yeah, they, they really need to reset that clock if in fact there was a timeout call there we go again there is another meeting well let's make sure you get it right that's the thing at this point yeah well you know 
This is just consistent, Mike. <laughs> it began this way, we shall end this way. When the play was dropped dead, when Dontrell Moore was tackled, I looked up and there were, I was watching seconds. the clock and it went down and it stopped, I thought at 13. Then I looked away and now they're starting the clock. And now, New Mexico will call a timeout. So Rocky Long has decided, I've had enough. We want the clock to spin down for one last try to win it New on Mexico a field goal. Taking their last time out of the game. But the clock stopped when it shouldn't have. Right. And then it sputtered along from 13 seconds to 12, and then it went to 11 and then down to 9. Which surprises you how in this game, Mike. <laughs> At any rate, <laughs> New Mexico has the timeout they wanted with four seconds left. Wes Zunker is on the field getting ready to kick the potential game-winning field goal. You know, you said something earlier, and I don't know if you remember, but it's almost like you were alluding to overtime. Yes, I've been saying left in the regulation or left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there you go. Because I you can see this game developing that way. Yeah. New Mexico came into this game about a four-point underdog. And the Lobos just don't beat BCS schools. They're like one for 25. And the last one was against Baylor. Zunker's career, he's 10 of 19 from 30 yards out. Three of five from between 30 and 39 yards. And the ball right now is at the 26. Seven or eight yards back, so we're talking what are we talking there? About a 43, 44-yard field goal attempt? Yeah. yeah. Cole McCamey is the spotter. He was the spotter all of last year, the holder. There's a look at the loneliest man in the place. Yeah. 39,000 of us, and Wes Zunker is all by himself. Counting the players, making sure he has 10 teammates on the field. <laughs> This to end a 20-year losing streak against Texas Tech. 0-10 against the Red Raiders who say, we'll take a timeout here. They want to ice Zunker, yep, right? and I think they've got one left, and they'll probably use that, too. They want to ice him. They want to play every mental game they can play right now because this is a game. Rocky looks a little nervous on the sidelines. This would be a huge win for the program. Rocky was asked earlier in this week why Texas Tech has had the streak, and he says it's hard to figure. We've had good players and good coaches, but he said they must have some advantages. They have a bigger budget. They have wonderful facilities. Right. UNM's is coming along, but it's not near what Texas Tech has, and they get better players. He said in the seven years he's been at New Mexico, Texas Tech and New Mexico have recruited the same player 25 times, and they've gotten one of them. And that wow. was Dontrell Moore. Wow. That's a big stat to lose, lose that many players, you know. So he's, I'm sure a lot of those players are very familiar with Rocky then since they, he's been recruiting over in that area. Well, I know they recruit Texas. New Mexico, again, I mentioned earlier, they had a punt block last week. You want to make sure that everybody's assignment is solid up front. You don't want a black punt where Texas Tech has an opportunity. Here we go. And now Tech will there take its final timeout. Zunker on ice. You know what I, what I thought of? If I was a coach, in this situation, you had one more timeout to take to freeze the opposing kicker, I wouldn't take it. Because that kicker is thinking they're going to call a timeout. Okay. I would go ahead and let it go at that point because the kicker to me is just anticipating one more timeout and now he knows there's no more timeouts right. and so he can focus in on what he has to do but we'll see how Wes handles it here he seems a little a little nervous like he's thinking about it a little bit well we want him thinking about the kick not that he's going to the mall tomorrow morning or something else I keep thinking about Ace Ventura you know laces out laces in whatever you're saying <laughs> all right here we go for the win, or perhaps overtime. At the 38-yard line, about a 48-yard attempt. On its way, it's up, and it's good! 
Oh, wow. Rocky Long and New Mexico have ended the jinx on West Sucker's oh. field goal from about 43 yards out. And look at the Lobos head to the north end zone to the Red Menace. They're sprinting to the Red Menace right now. New Mexico has finally, finally defeated Texas Tech. Unbelievable. The jubilation. I was, you, you noticed all the policemen were there around the goalposts because you know how the fans get crazy and want to tear down the goalposts? I think they would have tried. Look, no, they're not coming out. The police made a line right away in front of both goalposts. Rudy Davalos doesn't want to have to pay for another goalpost. Rather pay for the extra security. And the Lobos win it 27-24. Let's go down in the field to Alana with a very happy head coach. I don't have any. Go ahead, Alana, if you can hear me. Coach, can I get a quick word? Coach, how sweet was